it's time for Dodger Baseball. Live from Dodger Stadium, Sportsnet LA presents the Dodgers as they take on the Arizona Diamondbacks. Hi, everybody, and a very pleasant Friday evening to you, wherever you may be. Dodgers home after a six-game road trip to open up with Arizona. For the Arizona Diamondbacks, they arrive and they are hurting. They were 1-11 and 11 at home. They were just swept by the New York Mets. They've lost six in a row, and they're 0-5 against the Dodgers. And yet... Don't let the numbers fool you. Each of the last three years, Arizona has come to Dodger Stadium and beaten the Dodgers six out of nine. For Arizona tonight, it'll be left-hander Wade Miley. He is 3-3 three and three lifetime against the Dodgers. However, he is 3-0 and oh at Dodger Stadium. He was a 16-game winner two years ago, won 10 last year only because he left the game with a chance to win six times and the bullpen let it get away. On the mound for the Dodgers, it'll be Zach Granke. He is 10-2 and two at Dodger Stadium in his career. And not only that, he's really been on a roll. Granke is 3-0 and in his career as a Dodger against Arizona, and he has not allowed more than two runs in each of his last 15 starts. We'll get to the ball game, pull up a chair. It's going to be a good one, and we'll be back with a lot more right after this. in his left hand. You can see he was hit there by a 90 mile an hour fastball by Ryan Vogelsong. Could not grip the bat, but he is back 
and playing at short once again today. In yesterday's game, it was Justin Turner who was actually at the shortstop position. He is moving over to second base where he normally plays when he is in the lineup. He's batting in the two hole, and a couple of people were questioning the decision. Don Mattingly saying earlier that he likes it because he balance, he likes to balance the lineup out. He said Turner handles a good bat. He can go the other way. Mattingly likes him there because he knows how to do situational hitting. Justin Turner at second base. And Hanley Ramirez at short. Dodgers fans getting ready for game one between the Diamondbacks and the Dodgers. Vince Scully on the call next. Beginning of a 10-game homestand for the Dodgers, having just returned from Arizona and San Francisco. The Dodgers take the field tied with San Francisco for first. Arizona will take the field in last place in a five-team division. They are seven games back. Zach Granke going to the mound, 3-0 and this year. If you look at his career record, he is 3-3. Three and -three. However, as a Dodger against Arizona, he is 3-0. and And pitching in one of his favorite ballparks, Granke here at Dodger Stadium has 10 wins and two losses and has that long, amazing streak. He's allowed no more than two runs in 15 straight starts. So Zach Franke, Wade Miley, and the Dodgers and the D-backs in game one. For Kurt Gibson, he brings in a ball club that was weary at home. They were swept by the Mets. They come here with a six-game losing streak, but they play well here. Each of the last three years, they've won six out of nine from the Dodgers at Dodger Stadium. So here's the lineup they hope they'll get well with. Gerardo Parra opens up in right field. Aaron Hill, the second baseman. Then the big gun, Paul Goldsmith at first base. He already has 24 hits this year. Miguel Montero, the left-hand hitting catcher, bats clean up. Cody Ross, former Dodger and with the Diamondbacks, been on the DL for a long time with a bad hip. However, Cody has been reinstated, and sure enough, he's back in the lineup against his old club. Martin Prado will be at third base. Chris Owings the shortstop. A.J. Pollock in center field, and Wade Miley on the mound. A couple of things about Arizona, and it's been a pattern. 
If they are ahead after three innings in the game, their record is two and two. If Arizona is trailing after three innings, their record is one and nine. So it's a kind of a ball club, obviously, that needs to get the jump. And one reason the Dodgers have done well is their ability to get on the board first, and they've won 10 games doing that. Gerardo Parra will start it off to be followed by Aaron Hill and then Paul Goldsmith. Goldie, by the way, has been on base by hit, walk, or whatever in 40 of the 48 games he's played against the Dodgers. So here is Gerardo Parra, the veteran and a gold glove in right field. 55 assists in his career the last time we checked. Granky ready and delivers, and the first pitch is low, ball one. One and O. Oh. Giants playing San Diego, then they'll play Colorado. Dodgers play here, plus four coming up with Philadelphia, and then they'll get Colorado. The 1 0 pitch on the way, Parra takes, and that's low ball two. 65 degrees at the start of the evening on this 18th of April. Good Friday night. Preceding Easter Sunday. Two balls and no strikes the count. Par awaiting left hand batter. Granky comes to him and it's swung on and fouled away. And the count two and one. Granky hitting 90 on the gun. So Para, who means so much and got the ultimate compliment from his manager, Kirk Gibson, who called him a complete player. The so Kirk leaning on the railing, hoping to have a better fortune here. And the 2 1 pitch on the way, swung on and fouled off. 2 and 2 to Gerardo Parra. Parra is from Santa Barbara del Zulia, that's in Venezuela. We mentioned the fact that he's the complete player. He picked up a gold glove. There's only three Diamondbacks in the club's history to win a gold glove Orlando Hudson. Steve Finley and Para, who hits a hopper by the diving Adrian Gonzalez into right field, and the D-backs open up with their leadoff man Gerardo Para, a single into right field. That will bring up Aaron Hill. Before we see Hill, here are the Dodgers defensively: Gonzalez and Turner, Ramirez, Uribe, Van Slyke, Kemp, and Puig. The battery of Granke and Fedorovich. Turner playing, of course, for D. Gordon against the left-hander. And a couple of the Dodgers sitting down, Carl Crawford and Andre Ethier. So here is Aaron Hill. Hill batting just 222, checking in. Granky out of a stretch, keeping an eye on Para. Now works his hitter, gets the inside corner for a strike. Para standing on first base is one for two in stolen bases. Chris Owings, the shortstop. Is four for four. He's the leading runner in the Diamondback pack. So Granky out of his stretch with Para held on by Gonzalez. Strike one pitch, hard ground ball to Uribe. He goes down to Turner and he turns it. And they get the double play. Dodgers, by the way, have done extremely well turning the double play. That is the 20th double play turned in by the Dodgers. They're number one in the National League in DP. So around the horn, five, four, three, two down, and the batter now is Paul Goldsmith. Goldie, a remarkable young player, and with all of his good numbers, he's really dynamite here at Dodger Stadium. At Dodger Stadium in his career, hitting 361 here, 30 hits, six home runs, and 18 runs batted in. So the big right hand batter swings, fouls it back. And the count on one. If you look at Goldsmith's work against the Dodgers both here and away, he's still a formidable hitter, batting 333, nine home runs, 33 runs batted in. And if you've been following him at all, you know that he really owns Tim Lincecum. Strike one pitch is taken low, one and one. All Goldsmith is doing is hitting five. 42 against Linscombe with seven home runs and 17 runs batted in. 
So two down, bases empty, first inning. Granky ready and comes back. Check swing on a pitch low. Two and one the count. So Paul Goldsmith, outstanding young player. He has 56 hits in 40 games against the Dodgers, including 20 extra base hits. Right hand batter waits. Granky rocks and turns on the rubber, and the 2 1 pitch is taken a little low, and the count goes 3 and 1 to Paul Goldsmith. Goldie, and those who know, and that would be, of course, his manager, Kirk Gibson, Miguel Montero, left hand hitting catcher on deck. But Goldie's become a gold glove first baseman. He takes a strike, and the count 3 and 2. He's six feet three, 245 pounds. He'll be 27. Oh, he's really just starting. 27 in September. Last year, 36 home runs and 125 runs batted in. Granky ready, goes 3 2 and deals, and it is low, ball four. I'm not sure how much of Goldsmith he wanted with two out. So the batter now, Miguel Montero. Who catches just about every inning, it seems, when the Dodgers play the Diamondbacks. Miggy, as they call him over there, has had a good deal of success, including a home run against Zach Ranke. Though Montero at the plate, two down first inning. Goldsmith takes a cautious lead, held on by Gonzalez. Ranke ready and delivers, and the pitch is high, ball one. One and doe. Miguel Montero hitting 241. He has a home run, eight runs batted in. Has a look down to Glenn Sherlock, the coach at third, before getting back up to the plate. Frankie said a backward glance at Goldsmith and the 1 0 pitch of the left hand hitter. And that one's a little high, ball two. 2 0 the count. You don't expect Goldsmith to do any running, but he is two for two in stolen bases. Dave McKay talking to him for the moment. Two and all the count to Miguel Montero, who's hit safely five of the last seven games. He takes a strike, and the count two and one. So Goldsmith with a two out walk after par a single. Aaron Hill bangs into a double play. And with two out, a two and one count to Goldsmith. Put him eventually on base and now two and one to Montero. And the pitch is off the plate. So Granky, at least for the moment, is fighting it a little bit. Three and one to Miguel Montero. Dodgers could use a well pitched game because they have been burning up the bullpen. Three pitches yesterday, that wasn't bad. Three bullpen is the day before as Montero fouls it back. Then that was that game where the Giants won 3-2 in 12 innings. The Dodgers went to the bullpen six times. The game before that, they went to the bullpen five times. So for fellas like Paul Mahalam and whoever goes out there in this series, Dan Harron tomorrow and Josh Beckett the next game, they have to give the Dodgers some innings and give the bullpen a rest. Three and two, they're not holding Goldschmidt. He'll go and the pitch to Montero swung on and fouled away. So Goldsmith comes back and Montero deep in the counts has run it as far as he can go. Miggy has perked up in the last five games. Six for 18 so that's a nice 333 batting average. Montero waiting. Goldsmith not held on by Gonzalez. There he goes. And Montero takes way off the play ball four. So Granke in the first inning has given up a single and two walks, but he has two out. And the batter, the newly reinstated Cody Ross. Well, it's nice to have Cody back. He's a terrific player who gives it everything he has. Out with a bad hip, but he's back in now. Last year, Cody was in 94 games. Now he's just starting here 
on the 19th game hits a one hopper hard at Justin Turner who makes the play and that's the inning. No runs one hit the double play certainly helped two walks and two left the end of half an inning no score. First inning, no score in the ball game. D backs get a couple of men on, but come up empty. We'll take a look at the Dodger lineup now with the ACL Puig leading the way in right field. With a left hander going, Justin Turner makes a start at second base. Hanley Ramirez back in the lineup, having been hit on the back of the hand by Ryan Vogelsong, but reports he's okay. Adrian Gonzalez at first base, tearing things up. Then you have Matt Kemp in center. Scott Van Slyke in left, Juan Uribe at third, Tim Fedorovich behind the plate, Zach Granke on the mound. On the mound for the Arizona Diamondbacks, Wade Miley out of Laranja, Louisiana. Population under 5,000. The left-hander has cut his hair. The last time we saw him in Arizona, his hair was down to his shoulders. A bunt by Puig foul back in the count on one. One of the reasons I'm sure that Miley cut his hair to change his luck because his last start against the Dodgers April the 12th he was behind in the count on six hitters those hitters were three for five two singles a double and a walk so the count is very important and he's ahead of three now as Puig waits no balls one strike next pitch in the dirt and a one ball one strike count Miley also went to a full count six of them in five innings and during that time the hitters were two for four with two walks so he's trying to get out in front of the hitters and he has a one ball one strike count next pitch fast ball that's a little low ball two two and oh Miley and even six weighing 220 and of course big Puig backs out for the moment now Yasiel back in Miley was the first Arizona rookie to go to an all-star game in 2012 and he's low for ball three three and one to count when you ask him about Lorenzo Louisiana he said there's a grocery store a gas station and a school that's about it no stoplights no stop sign no chain restaurants three one pitch on the way Puig fouls it off in order to go to a a well-known restaurant Let's say Subway, McDonald's, Walmart. You have to go at least 12 miles. So it is a small, small town in Louisiana. Three and two now in the big city, and the pitch to Puig is low, ball four. So immediately the Dodgers will try to put some pressure on Miley. We'll take a look at the D backs defensively Goldsmith and Hill, Owings and Prado. And the outfield, Ross, Pollock, and Parra with Montero handling Miley. So the batter now, Justin Turner, Yasiel Puig at first base held on by Paul Goldsmith. 
Dodgers have been running a lot. They have 20 stolen base. That's number one in the league. Out of his stretch goes Miley. Left hander looks at Puig. Works the plate. High. Ball one. One and O. Oh. Boy, Yasiel Puig standing at first base. In case you wonder, he's one for two in stolen bases. Meanwhile, D. Gordon sits down with the left hander going. One of the hottest hitters the Dodgers have as Turner takes a strike. One thing about Miley, we were just talking about stolen bases. He's very tough. Very tough. In his career, he's allowed 11 stolen bases. He's caught 13 and picked off 10. So he's tough indeed. Looks over at Puig, now works the plate, and snaps a fastball low and behind two and one. Another fellow who's tough on runners is Granky. So Turner has a look down to Lorenzo Bundy, two and one the count in case they're thinking about hit and run. That's the manager's count. Miley staring into Montero. Now out of his stretch, looks at Puig. He's not going anywhere, and the pitch fouled away upstairs. When you are facing Wade Miley, you expect to see a lot of ground balls. In fact, the number one ground ball pitcher, A.J. Burnett, based on last year, 72% were ground balls. Right behind him, Wade Miley, 67%. Zach Granke, 62% ground balls. Here's the 2-2 pitch to Turner, swung on, fouled away again upstairs to the right. Though so the count stays two and two. Another interesting thing based on Miley last year. First time through the lineup, the opposition hit 147. But the second time, 343. And the third time, 352. So we'll see what happens now. Two and two to Turner. And the fastball fouled away again. We were talking about how the Dodgers need some innings from their starters. For Kurt Gibson, he needs a lot with Hanley Ramirez waiting because his starting pitcher has really been tough. Arizona is 30th in the major leagues in earned run average. The staff earned run average is 7.63. So the starters have really hurt him. If you include the bullpen, the ERA is over six. 2 2 pitch to Justin Turner, breaking ball low, ball three. So he gave him a few fastballs, came over the top, and dropped down low. So with a full count, nobody out, we'll see about Puig. And he has to be careful because of Miley's move. Wade hands it his sides. Left hander, long look in. Now to a stretch, staring at Puig. Puig goes, the pitch is checked. And it's strike three, a bounce throw to second, not in time. The check swing of the play turns out to be ball four. So had it been more of a demonstrative call, Puig would not have had to slide. So that's a little indictment of a plate umpire who's supposed to call strong enough so you don't have a useless slide and maybe a risk of injury. So the throw on a bounce anyway, and Puig was in there. But you have two walks. Hui going to second. Turner at first. Scott Barry is the plate umpire. He's been around five years. He's from Michigan. He went to Oliver College in Michigan and got a degree in secondary education teaching. So we'll have to watch Scott's move. Puig had an unnecessary slide. Two on, nobody out. Ramirez, Gonzalez, and Kemp now. The heart of the Dodger lineup. Ramirez hit on the back of the left hand by Ryan Vogelsong, but checks in today. It's a ground ball up the middle. The feed by the shortstop Owens. They'll turn it for two, and taking third is Puig. So Hanley Ramirez hits into the DP. Turnabout is fair play. Dodgers turned on Hill, and now D backs turn on Ramirez. So a ground ball up the middle, not hard enough to get through, and Owings was able to hang it to Hill. Aaron turned it easily, and down go Ramirez along with Turner. Puig takes third, and the batter will be Adrian Gonzalez. 
Gonzalez as you probably know did a tremendous job a series to remember in Arizona. He had a double three home runs and 10 RBI. However Adrian is hitting only 217 against left hand pitching. So Miley Reddy works low one ball and no strikes Matt Kemp on deck. For Gonzalez put it all together the ups and the downs he's hitting 286 but he has a 12 game hitting streak. He's hitting 340 during the streak with five home runs 14 runs batted in. So Adrian waiting one ball no strikes. Here comes Miley in the fastball fouled away. Miley hitting 92 one and one to count Adrian Gonzalez. Adrian slowly getting back up. D backs had two walks in the first inning failed to do anything with them. Dodgers have two walks in their first inning and they've not done anything. One one pitch to Gonzalez low and inside two and one to count. With Gonzalez despite the fact he's left handed the infield is back. So Puig if he wants to stray a little bit down the line from third. Not that he's going to come with a left hand hitter at the plate. Prado way off the line way wide of the bag The pitch to Adrian swung on and missed and the count two and two. Two down first inning no score just start of a three game series. Remember tomorrow a 5 p.m. game and then the usual 110 on Easter Sunday. Miley. Looking in Gonzalez waiting Kemp on deck with two out two two pitch on the way waved out and missed breaking ball away and down goes Ramirez with the double play and Gonzalez striking out so the Dodgers no runs no hits they leave a man in third and at the end of an inning no score. That the Dodgers have done well against Arizona 5 and 0, but they're under 500 to the rest of the league. And where they score a lot of runs against Arizona, they score half of that against the others. And runners with scoring position, Dodgers about 40 points lighter against the rest of the league. In other words, you get the point. The ERA, one and a half against Arizona, and over three against the rest of the league. So the Dodgers now have Granke working on Martin Prado and the third baseman takes ball one one and oh the count Prado Owings and Pollock in that order. Martin hitting 261 four runs batted in. The 1 0 pitch on the way is taken for a strike one and one. 
A report out of New York Atlanta shut down the Mets six to nothing. David Wright had the only hit. It was a clean single with two out in the eighth inning. Aaron Harang the former Dodger came close for the second time. The one one pitch off the plate. Harang released by Cleveland picked up by Atlanta the end of March. Had a seven inning no hitter against Milwaukee. And Aaron also had a seven inning no hitter tonight against the Mets. Two one pitch from Granke sprayed foul off the protective fencing in front of the visitors dugout. Two and two the count to Martin Prado. Prado the last time we saw him turned in a good effort went three for four. He's a good player just off to somewhat of a slow start. Dodgers know full well of how he swung the bat last year. The 2 2 pitch swung on and foul back. Martin last year hit 282. He had 36 doubles, 14 home runs, 82 runs batted in. So he was certainly a hitter to reckon with. He's from Maracay in Venezuela. The month of August last year, he had 30 runs batted in. Here's the 2 2 pitch on the way. Prado lifts it into shallow right. Trio of Dodgers. Puig has the play and one hands it for the out. So Martin Prado, little fly ball the other way, one down. And the batter now, Chris Owings. Owings, the shortstop, won the battle with D.D. Gregarius coming through spring training. He's backed up by the veteran, Cliff Pennington. But it's Owings' job to lose, really. Owings has drawn a blank or two, as they all do. He was picked off two games in a row. So with one out, right-hand batter fouls it away. He's from Charleston, South Carolina. He committed to a baseball scholarship to the University of South Carolina, but instead signed with the Diamondbacks for about a million dollars. He was a first round pick strike one pitch on the way and he takes a look at strike two. Owings on the small side as big leaguers go 510 maybe 180. Granky is 6 2 and 200 strike two pitch on the way in the dirt blocked there by Fedorovich one and two the count. So Zach Granke got out of a spot of trouble in the first inning gave up a base hit two walks but a double play followed the base hit. One out second inning no score. Granke ready and comes back to Owings one two off speed and the kid is way out in front of a 66 mile an hour change. So Owings started his swing today. And it finished because he just could not hold up on it, and down he goes. That's the first strikeout for Granky getting the rookie Owings. And now with two down, A.J. Pollock coming up. Pollock is the center fielder, fresh from the campus of Notre Dame. Granky's first pitch in for a strike to A.J. No balls and one strike, the count. Pollock, right hand batter. The strike one pitch and that's low and inside one ball and one strike. A.J. stands for Alan Lorenz Pollock the fourth. He was a shortstop in high school. Runs very well and covers a lot of ground in center field. Tries to time that slow pitch. That was only 72 and he comes up empty. One and two the count. He had eight home runs 38 runs batted in in 137 games last year. So Pollock waiting. Granky comes back one two very high another change. That one was only 64 miles an hour. Shades of Vicente Padilla and the soap bubble two and two. Granky says no then nods yes and the two two pitch is fisted foul right into the Arizona dugout. So Pollock is still there. 
AJ's dad played rugby at Boston College. AJ himself plays the guitar. They say mostly classical rock and alternative. When he was at Notre Dame, he majored in sociology. But he's cashing in on baseball. Two balls and two strikes. Granky turns on the middle of the rubber over the top and he's in the dirt. So he goes three and two. Pollock also played basketball four years in high school and for good measure varsity soccer waiting on deck is Wade Miley last time we saw him against Granky he went two for two. Here's the three two pitch on the way fastball hit late and foul. So going from 66 miles an hour he got that fastball up to 92. So three and two the count on the edge having already walked two. And he has struck out one. No score. Second inning, base is empty. Ranky ready. Fedorovic sets a target, and the pitch is strike three called. So Granky just drilled the catcher's mitt. Strikes out Owings and Pollock. Owings on a change. Pollock on a fastball at the end of an inning and a half. No score. will take home their very own Dodger welcome mat compliments of new era buy your tickets today at dodgers.com slash promotions Matt Kemp will lead it off they'll be followed by Scott Van Slyke and then Juan Uribe lovely evening as the game starts Miley into the windup delivers Matt swings doesn't get it and they count 0 and 1 Matt Kemp yesterday Made one of the better catches we've seen in quite a while. So did Yasiel Puig. The one that Matt caught, he had to make a long run, running parallel to the center field wall. He fouls another pitch off. He had to contend with the bright sun and the wind. And on the dead run on a ball hit by Michael Morse, he made a great catch. But earlier, Yasiel Puig actually upstaged him making a la Willie Mays a catch on a ball hit over his head on that windy day. Kemp fouls off another. We're talking about the Dodger outfielders and their prowess with the glove but there's a reason because the combined Dodger outfield that would be the three tonight along with Andre Ethier and Carl Crawford all together they're hitting 230. That's all 230. Here's the strike two pitch Kemp fouls it away. That would put the Dodger outfielders collectively batting average. They would be 22nd of a 30 team Major League Baseball. So you get the idea. 
the outfield has not been heard from. So Matt waiting 0 and 2 he's just hitting 171. Miley into the windup back with a pitch it's rolled up the middle backhanded by Aaron Hill the throw to first in time for the out. So Kemp like Ramirez hits it up the middle but not enough behind it in the first inning. Owings was able to catch up to Ramirez ground ball and this time Aaron Hill is able to catch up to Kemp's ground ball. So one away in the second inning and Scott Van Slyke coming up. Van Slyke will be followed by Juan Uribe. Van Slyke certainly is the one hitter in the outfield who's done well. Scotty takes a strike and the count 0 and 1. In and out of the lineup, he has a home run, three RBIs, hitting 313. Strike one pitch off the plate, one ball and one strike. Bottom of the second, no score. Van Slyke is very valuable to the Dodgers, playing left field to spell Crawford, and he will also figure to play first base and spell Adrian Gonzalez. Crawford with Sean Figgins talking over the game right now. Bottom of the second, one out, no score. The one two pitch, Ben Slikes out of there in time called by Scott Barry. So Wade Miley, good pitcher. Two wins, two losses. The pitch low and away. Miley, two years ago, won 16. Then if you look at last year, you say, well, he had a bad year. He was 10 and 10. Not so. The 2 2 pitch, Van Slyke swings and down he goes. Last year, Miley came out of games, six of them, where he could win, and each time the bullpen let it get away. So he wound up 10 and 10. He has two strikeouts to balance his two walks. And the batter, Juan Uribe. Uribe off to a great start, 375 with two home runs. Six runs batted in and doing a terrific job with the glove at third base. Miley turns, left handed delivers, fastball swung on and missed, and the count 0 and 1. Wade doesn't wander around. A moment later, he's back on the rubber and ready. Comes with a fastball high. One ball, one strike. No score, two down, bottom of the second. D backs had a base hit followed by a double play, two walks and an out. The 1 1 pitch foul back. Dodgers had two walks and a double play and an out. And now two outs, second inning, no score. Dodgers have beaten Arizona all five times, starting in Sydney, Australia, and then over in Arizona. 1-2 pitch on the way, swung on, fouled off. Dodgers have gotten into the habit of scoring in the first inning. They've scored 11 runs in the first inning of games, but it was shut down tonight. 1-2 pitch is off the plate on a check swing. 2-2 two and two the count to Juan Uribe. Uribe with a little modest five game hitting streak. 2 2 pitch is fouled away. Tuesday, when the Dodgers were in San Francisco, Uribe had a three hit game. That's his fifth three hit game already this year, most in baseball. 2 and 2 to Juan. Miley's pitch, check swing on a fastball inside, no swing, says Jeff Nelson. So a full count with Tim Fedorovich waiting on deck. Miley's 3-2 pitch swung on. High fly ball. It's playable to center field. A.J. Pollock is right there. Two-handed catch. And the Dodgers are down in order. So at the end of two, Granke and Miley all locked in. No score.
mentioned earlier, the last time we saw Wade Miley over in Arizona, he had the long hair down to his shoulders, a very thick beard. But he is not clean shaven, but he certainly had the haircut to a proper style. And the man from Larangia, Louisiana, checks in and takes ball one. He's also on a streak. He's two for two against Granky, but more than that, he has four hits in his last four at bats. Miley swings, hits it foul, out of play. That's headline news for a pitcher. By the way, the club record for Arizona consecutive hits by a pitcher, Mike Morgan, who at one time pitched for the Dodgers, previous D back pitcher to record a hit four straight, Ian Kennedy. The 1 1 pitch on the way, line foul off third into the lower deck, and the count 1 and 2. So Wade Miley, good all around athlete. Grew up hoping one day, dreaming one day that he would play for the Atlanta Braves. Near but no cigar, he made his debut against the Atlanta Braves. Swings at a pitch, it's in the dirt. Apparently got a little bit of it, so he's still there. One and two. Wade made his debut in August of 2011 against the team for which he rooted as a child. Wade waiting. Granky ready, and the one-two pitch coming up. Miley swings and misses. Down he goes, and he comes back to earth. And by the way, for Granky, three consecutive strikeouts. The young kid, I really think, will someday hit a ball out of Dodger Stadium. Just beat Seattle. And we're talking about Giancarlo Stanton. He had a ninth inning walk-off grand slam. Now remember, he already has six home runs, 26 RBIs. A walk-off grand slam indeed as Gerardo Parra gets in. Granky ready, comes to Parra, gets it in for a strike. Two weeks ago tomorrow, Ike Davis beat Cincinnati with a walk-off grand slam in New York. Tonight, the former first-round pick of the Mets traded to the Pirates. There's a base hit to left field from Parra, who is now 2-4-2. Two, two. Giancarlo Stanton, monstrous power. Most recently, he hit one, I think they said it was 487. So Parra gets the ball up, goes the other way with it, and hits it into lab. So Gerardo is two for two, and the batter will be Aaron Hill, a good one, who hit into a double play in the first inning. So Parra takes his lead, and Granke immediately throws over there very close. We were talking about Miley a little while ago. He has 10 pickoffs. Granke has 18 pickoffs. There have been 56 stolen bases against him, but 50 times he has caught the runner. Granke set at the belt, watching Parra now to the plate, and the pitch is low. Diamondbacks do not do a lot of running. Gerardo Parra is one for two. Diamondbacks only have 11 stolen bases. The Dodgers have 20. Dodgers are number one. Of course, one reason is D. Gordon, who has stolen 10 out of 11. One old pitch on the way is instead throw to first. Parra diving back to the bag. Important what goes on right now because in the on deck circle is Paul Goldschmidt. So Goldie is waiting. One ball and no strikes to Aaron Hill. The next pitch put on in a high pop foul. It's Adrian Gonzalez in foul ground to make the catch. So Hill fouls out. Para has to hold. And the batter is Paul Goldsmith. It's funny how the mind works. I look at Paul Goldsmith. And I think of the number 44, which he is wearing, which was worn for so many years with distinction by the great Henry Aaron. And then I realize that today is the birthday of Miguel Cabrera, who is 31. And you say, well, what in the heck is the connection between Miguel Cabrera and Henry Aaron? Well, Cabrera, 31 today, 
has 360 home runs and 320 batting average as Goldsmith fouls it away. His numbers are identical to Henry Aaron's numbers when he turned 31. 366 home runs and a 320 batting average. Of course, Henry went on to hit 371 more home runs while in his 30s. No balls and one strike to count. Goldsmith takes in the dirt. And that looked like it crossed up Fedorovich. He looked almost startled on the reaction of the pitch. But he stayed with it and smothered it. He's looking down and he really has to go to his knees to block it. Holding on is Parra. Parra held on by Adrian Gonzalez. Big Goldsmith waiting. He walked in the first inning. The 1-1 pitch on the way to Paul, and he swings and doesn't get it. One and two. Since 2012, you realize that Goldsmith has 56 hits against the Dodgers. The marvelous young player. We're in the top of the third. No score in the ball game. Game one of the three-game series. Tomorrow at 5, Sunday at 110. Here's the one two pitch to Paul Goldsmith in the dirt. Another block by Fedorovich. Tomorrow, by the way, five o'clock, Mike Bolsinger will make his major league debut against the Dodgers in a starting role. He relieved briefly the other day. He'll go up against Dan Harron. And then Sunday, Easter Sunday, it'll be Cole Mentor coming out of the bullpen to make a start against Josh Beckett. Two and two to Paul Goldsmith. Granky delivers inside corner. Strike three called, and down goes Goldie. Strikeout number four for Granky. No runs, a hit, and a man left. And at the end of two and a half innings, no score. And it'll be Fedorovich and Granke and Puig in that order. Tim Fedorovich has not been doing much hitting. Really not a great deal is asked of him. He does such a great job behind the plate. However, yesterday in the second inning, he had a base hit to center to drive in Van Slyke and give the Dodgers their first of two runs, and they needed both of them to win 2-1. to one. Oh, and one to count to Tim Fedorovich. Now Miley back with a pitch below the knees. One ball and one strike. 
No runs two hits for Arizona nothing for the Dodgers in the third. Miley ready in the one one pitch on the way is foul back. So one and two the count. Fedorovich up against a tough left hander despite the fact he was only 10 and 10 last year. He had something like 22 quality starts. The fastball popped up right side Hill going out coming in his power. It will be Hill. He was locked in. Parra would have had a much easier play. One down and the batter will be Zach Granke. We mentioned that Miley was two for two against Granke this year. Zach however is 0 for four. Last year Granke had an on base percentage of 426. That's pretty high for a pitcher with 50 plate appearances. It got him right up there with the wonderful immortal name of Don Newcomb. And the pitch swung on high fly ball very playable down the left field line. Cody Ross right there and makes the catch for the out. So Granke a fly ball two away. Yasiel Pui coming in. Last year you may remember Granke hit 328. So with two out Yasiel Pui consuming a little bit of time in the on deck circle with a purpose. He wants to at least get his pitcher back in the dugout to sit down. Now Yasiel coming up walked got as far as third in the first inning. So Puig with a home run five RBIs hitting 250. There was a while there last year especially where he was swinging at the first pitch and he was hitting over 600 but he's been taking it a lot this year. He takes running up as if to bunt one ball and no strikes. Another fellow who is suddenly taking the first pitch Pablo Sandoval of San Francisco. One 0 pitch is a little low. So Yasiel with the count his way 2 and 0. Lorenzo Bundy gives him a wide berth out of that third base coaching box. He's ready to run duck or whatever. Puig takes on the inside corner good pitch. Little cutter. Fastball that just moved in at the last minute. And moved in at 93. Miley into the windup and his 2 1 pitch, fastball but low. 3 and 1 the count to Yasiel Pui. On deck, Justin Turner. We're in the third, no score in the ballgame. Miley into the windup, back he comes and he is high. So Puig walks a second time. You know how we're, we're always talking about this day in baseball, big deal? There is a big day today, and it has nothing to do with Kirk Gibson hitting a home run or somebody else making a great catch. April the 18th, 1942. The United States had to do something. Pearl Harbor, December of 41, just about flattened us, certainly the Navy. And we had to do something psychologically to shake up Japan and also to give our own people some heart and it happened on this day. Throw to first Puig back on the bag. What was it? Lieutenant Colonel. Jimmy Doolittle. They had never done it before B 25 flying off the USS Hornet where going to Japan. It was a one way trip and every pilot knew it. Another throw to first. They also had to leave earlier because a Japanese fishing boat had spotted the USS Hornet and alerted the enemy. So they had to leave earlier than they had planned. I don't even think they had filled up enough gasoline but they took off. The pitch of the plate is going to go foul down the line out of play. Owen won the count. So we talk about heroes but those men who followed Doolittle most of them landed in China. One I believe landed in Russia. Some were put in internment camps for a long long time. I think we lost one or two crews. But it was an uplifting moment for this country. Strike one pitch in there 0 and 2. And all of a sudden the headline was. We bombed Japan. We're not weak. We're not flattened. We're coming back. 
And it happened on this day, April the 18th, 1942. And Colonel Doolittle received the Congressional Medal of Honor. Now we're talking heroes. Anyway, no balls, two strikes. Turner waiting, two down, bottom of the third. Justin, who walked in the first inning, trying to move Puig, who has a conservative lead, Miley, a good move. Puig bluffs, and the pitch fouled away upstairs. Turner has not been able to pull a pitch foul. He's been a hair late, and even in the first at bat, just about all the foul balls went second deck off to the right. So the redhead gets back in. No balls and two strikes. Puig shaking dirt from his shoes. He's holding the pitch, a half swing. Turner badly fooled. Slider in the dirt and strikes out. So no runs, no hits, a man left. Three in the books. And at the end of three, no score. Try the new Jack's Blazing Chicken Sandwich. It's Jack's hottest sandwich yet. And by the Ram 1500, Motor Trends 2014 Truck of the Year and first ever back-to-back -back champion. Beautiful evening here in Southern California as we go to the fourth inning. No score in the ball game. It'll be Miguel Montero, Cody Ross, and then Martin Prado. Montero walked in the first inning. And ball one. Montero from Caracas, Venezuela. He has really been a horse, as they call the hardworking guys who are in there every day. Fouled off. One and one. I believe, I forget the note now, but Montero, I think, has caught over a thousand innings for several years in a row and certainly every time you look up in a Dodger game it's always Montero no matter the pitcher one and one one and two Miguel last year hit 263 but for the full year with Arizona he had 230 he had a bad back but he's had a couple of years where he hit 294 282, a good solid ball player. He'll be 31 years old in July. One and two. Foul back. Montero was signed out of a tryout camp in Venezuela. There were several teams who didn't think he was even a prospect. You say you came out of nowhere to make the major leagues. He said, no, I came out of hard work. And he is still working hard. Two and two the count. Zach Granke has been off. 
He walked two back to back in the first inning, but he's made that up by striking out three. Breaking ball hit foul outside of first down the line. Two balls and two strikes. Waiting hitting behind Montero is Cody Ross. They were asking Montero about what would you have done if you weren't a major league ball player and he said I wanted to be a baseball player. I love being a baseball player. If I were to be born again I would love to be a baseball player and I'd love to be a catcher again. Two and two. Little foul ball off third that will go out of play. Montero wasn't really swinging. He was kind of protecting the plate. Just put the bat on the ball. Two and two. Montero 5'11, 215. Lives in Chandler, Arizona now. Originally born in Caracas. Of course, from what you read, Caracas and Venezuela are rather troubled area. Ball three. The Ranky that made 53 pitches in the first three innings has now gotten it up to 61. So this is a nine pitch at bat for Miguel Montero. And he's just wearing Granky out, fouling him off. I think Kirk Gibson summed up the most about Montero a couple of years ago, but it still holds true to this day. Kirk said, of anybody on the team, Montero has the most energy on a day to day basis. He is always chirping, he's always got a real good positive attitude. Three and two. Another foul ball. So Granke had made 53 pitches and then Montero came up. It's an 11. Yeah, 11 pitch at bat. It's coming up. Once again, three and two. Another foul ball, and again, that's not an attack swing. That's kind of a slow bat swing just to fight the pitch off. So it's a 12 pitch at bat coming up to Miguel Montero. Take another look. This is that non aggressive swing, just casual to make sure you hit it. And it goes foul. Still three and two. So you have a very good pitcher and a very knowledgeable hitter and they are going right down to the wire here. This will be the 12th pitch of the at bat. Little roller Gonzalez will feed his man coming over one down. So that was quite a battle between Granke and Montero. One away and Cody Ross the batter. Cody Ross a very very interesting fellow. His father Kenny underwent five knee surgeries. Three while playing football at the University of New Mexico. Another in a steel wrestling event in a rodeo or rodeo however you wish to pronounce it. The pitch to Cody in for a strike on one. And what's really interesting, you talk about Montero. I always wanted to be a baseball player. Talk to Cody Ross. He said he wanted to be a rodeo clown. When you think about it, what a job that is. That's a little chin music. One ball and one strike. Cody will be 34 a couple of days before Christmas. Went to Carlsbad High. Grew up in New Mexico and then over in Scottsdale. He is one tough hombre, especially following in the footsteps of his father. One and one. Ball two. Cody was signed by the Tigers, found his way into the Dodger organization in 2005, and then he was gone. Went to the Reds and then moved on. The Marlins, the Giants, Red Sox. And D backs comebacker backhanded by Granky to throw him out. 
A uh, nice play by Zach Franke to handle a comeback that might otherwise have gone up the middle. Granky, by the way, has a rather remarkable set of numbers. See if I can dig it out. As far as defense is concerned, he's somewhat on the amazing side. He has not committed an error since July 16, 2010, counting tonight. That would be 107 games. He has a fielding average. Of, of almost 990. So he just showed the fact that he is quite a man with the leather. Meanwhile, not quite as sharp as we've seen him. He's fighting it, and he's behind two and out of Prado, who applied to right field in the second inning. Rick Honeycutt watching his every move and the 2 0 pitch in for a strike. However, Granke is in the fourth inning and he's made 72 pitches. Of course, Montero was a killer, a 12 pitch at bat. That'll wear out any pitcher. Two and one. That's a little low. So he walked two, but he's fighting his control. Ready to make his 74th pitch on deck, hitting back at Prado is young Chris Owings, the shortstop. No score, fourth inning. Fouled away. We usually keep track of foul balls only in the idea of whether a pitcher is actually overpowering the hitters or not. And certainly, no one likes to see his pitcher giving up a lot of foul balls. It takes a lot out of him. It piles up the pitch count. Though so he's three and two again. And it's foul back. So as long as the hitters are getting a bat on the ball. The pitcher is a little suspect. Of course Prado a veteran very good hitter. When his last year with the Braves he had 301. Last year with the D-backs 282, so he's making Granky work. After Montero did quite a job. Breaking ball hit foul. So right now, Granky has made 73 pitches, and Rick Honeycutt has taken notes, having trouble putting the hitter away. He does have four strikeouts. Three balls, two strikes. Got it. So five strikeouts for Zach Granke, but it is a little bit of a slugger, and uh, Martin Prado is not too happy about it. Take a look at the location. Look good crossing the plate. At the end of three and a half innings, no score.
1,000 ticketed kids 14 and under take home their own Hanley Ramirez replica batting jersey presented by Time Warner Cable. For tickets, visit Dodgers.com slash promotion. Well, Miley and Granky push against shove. Granky has struck out five, walked two, and given up two hits. Miley has not given up anything, a couple of walks. Hanley Ramirez pulls one foul outside of third, 0 oh and 1. It was Wednesday. Vogel song hit him on the back of the left hand, and as Ramirez said, he was furious because he thought that would put him out. He had already been injured twice at AT&T Park, once playing for the Dominican Republic in the World Baseball Classic. However, after x-rays, the swelling went down. The next day, Hanley said he'd like to play, and Mattingly said, no, I might use you as a pinch hitter, but I want you to rest. So he is wearing a guard on the back of that left hand. But any time you take one on the hand, so many bones, such a complicated area, it could be serious. One and two to Hanley. Ramirez hitting 276, came into the game hitting 281, and grounded into a double play in the first inning. One and two to Hanley. Show him a fastball down and away. Wade Miley. From Louisiana where they hunt for alligators you see that on TV and he's actually hunted for alligators as well. Two and two. Got him. The Ramirez caught looking that strikeout number four for Miley. We've had nine strikeouts in the game. As Miley comes at the knees and down goes Hanley. Remember Miley in his young career is three and oh in this ballpark. He likes to pitch here. Here's Adrian Gonzalez with a 12 game hitting streak struck out in the first inning. We mentioned he came in hitting only 217 against left handers and a strike. One thing every now and then if you watch closely with Adrian he'll foul off a pitch. And you know he is saying to himself, I should have driven that pitch. Line foul, and immediately he's in a hole 0 and 2. It looked like he wanted to ask the umpire, was that a strike? But the umpire had walked away, Scott Barry did, to get a new supply of baseballs. 0 and 2. 1 and 2. Breaking ball fouled away. Miley, according to his teammates, has a rather endearing personality. Tells a lot of stories in a Louisiana accent, a lot of them on himself. Very popular. Two years ago, he was second in the National League Rookie of the Year when he won 16. Fouled off. Basically a two seam fastball that sinks, slider, curve and a change. And like most pitchers today, he also has a cutter. Fastball pull, foul ball. Two years ago when Miley won 16, he was among the National League leaders in fewest walks. He averaged just 1.7. I mean, that put him up with people like Cliff Lee and Mark Burley. On the outside corner. So five strikeouts for each starting pitcher. Gonzalez telling Scott Barry, he thought that pitch was off the plate. Fielder, number 27, 
Nice job of framing, as they call it, by the veteran catcher Montero. So that's three strikeouts in a row. Remember, he walked Puig, struck out Turner, opens the inning, strikes out Ramirez, strikes out Gonzalez, and now Matt Kemp. One ball and no strikes. Granke made 77 pitches in his four innings. 65 for Miley. One and one. Dodgers had first and second nobody out in the first inning. They've scored 11 runs already in the first inning this year, but not tonight. And a base hit to center. We'll watch Kemp, and he's watching Pollock. So a two out single. That is hit number one against Wade Miley. And the batter will be Scott Van Slyke. So Kemp, a sharp single to center, went down to get it. That might have been below the knees. And he singles to center on a breaking ball. So no runs, two hits for Arizona, no runs, one hit for the Dodgers. And here is Scott Van Slyke. Matt Kemp is one for one in stolen bases, and they're going to keep an eye on him, you can bet. Van Slyke looking down to Bundy to see if there might be something on the line. Scotty hitting 294. Foul tip to fastball. 0 and 1. Scott's dad, Andy Van Slyke. Andy is always the answer to the question when Jack Clark hit the famous home run to beat the Dodgers back in 1985. Who was on deck? Well, it was Scott's father. Fastball on the corner, so he's in a hole. No balls and two strikes. Van Slyke's body language tells you he wasn't happy with the call, so he just cools off and walks away from home plate. Montero looking over for a pitch out, just in case Gibby wants to call it. One and two the count. Miley has walked three and struck out five and allowed one hit. Granke has allowed two hits to the leadoff man, Gerardo Parra. He has struck out five and walked two. Bounce that one. It gets away from Montero. There goes Camp. He is in there. The ball got away from Owings by Aaron Hill. So Hill couldn't come up with it. Camp. Stealing second, although if he was not going, it would just be a wild pitch, and I think they're going to call it a wild pitch. No stolen base. Yep. So just the wild pitch. The throw is there, and then it came right out of Hill's glove. So the Dodgers now, for the second time, get a man to second. That man was Puig, who got the third in the first inning. Van Slyke on a check, no swing. Two out, Kemp at second. On deck, Juan Uribe. And ball four. That is the fourth walk given up by Wade Miley. Four walks, five strikeouts, and one hit. Juan Uribe fly ball to A.J. Pollock in the second inning. Gibson talking to his bench coach, Alan Trammell. And here's Uribe. Juan 0 for 1, hitting 369. Two on, two out. No score in the fourth. Game one of a three game series, and it is the sixth meeting of the year between the two clubs. Remember, they started. In Australia, Mike Harkey, the animated 
pitching coach along with Trammell and Gibby. So here's your rebay with a chance to hurt Miley and the D-backs. Low fastball in the dirt. New ball put in play. One ball and no strikes. One ball and no strikes. Two on, two out, fourth inning, no score. Drive to center. Pollock has a play and makes the catch. He had that all the way. So no runs, a hit, a walk, and two left. And at the end of four, no score. and fans at the game will take home a mini Cy Young themed Kershaw bobblehead compliments of Time Warner Cable. For tickets visit Dodgers.com slash promotions. Well the pitchers are really locked in Clayton Kershaw getting close one of these days I guess. He's throwing a little bit harder. Although it's referred to as what sub maximal. Anyway. He's starting to throw harder each time he goes to the bullpen. It'll be Owings, Pollock, and Miley in that order. No score in the fifth. Ball one. Granky missing a lot on his first pitch. Nevertheless, he has only walked two while striking out five. D backs have stranded three. And he's behind again now, two and oh. Owings struck out in the second inning. Chris out of South Carolina. Now a strike. Two and one. Owings came to the D backs with good credentials. He was the Pacific Coast League Rookie of the Year, and he was also the winner of the Most Valuable Player Award. He hit 330. Two and one. And that's in there to even it up two and two. Pitch count. Zanke up to 81 pitches. First man up in the fifth inning. Two balls, two strikes. Breaking ball reached for a ground ball to Ramirez who gets him. Owings runs very well. So a nice play by Hanley. One down. Hey, you can see Granke five starts in his career. Four with the Dodgers. He was 0-3 with Kansas City and Milwaukee. But he is 3-0 ever since he put the blue on. And look at the difference in the earned run average from almost eight 
to a little more than one and a half. Hard ground ball knocked down by Uribe from foul ground. Too late. So A.J. Pollock hits one that gets away from Uribe. We'll wait and see. It's going to be an error. Dodgers have struggled defensively. You have a tendency to overlook the defense. Dodgers have committed 16 errors. Might not surprise you that the last place Arizona Diamondbacks have made 16 errors. So one out, runner at first. Here's Miley. Shows bunt. And that almost got away. Ball one. Dodgers playing their 17th game. And with 16 errors, it's easy to do the math. They're averaging an error a game. And that will certainly catch up to you. That's going to be hit at Ramirez. He went up the ladder, made the nice catch, and holding it first is Pollock. Nice play by Hanley. And Miley, who had been two for two against Granky, struck out first time but almost got a hit, except for Hanley Ramirez. However, the error gives an extra at bat, and Gerardo Parra is two for two. Parr led off the ball game with a single, came up in the third inning, had a base hit. And breaking ball strike. Hanley Ramirez, by the way, in leaping in the air. He's six feet three. So at six three and then leave the ground, you can cover a lot of altitude, which is what he needed to take that hit away from Miley. 0 oh and 1 to Parra. AJ Pollock over there at first does not have a stolen base. Of course, the one thing if you do run him, if he makes it fine, if he doesn't make it, you have your leadoff man coming up the next inning. 0 oh 2. Gerardo Parra hit 288 last year. Two years ago, he hit 292. Last year, he developed a little bit of sock. He had 10 home runs, 48 runs batted in. Pollock inching off, held on by Gonzalez. One and two. Parra had been struggling with the bat. He was just one for 11, but he got well in a hurry, two for two tonight. Comebacker. And that middle infielder, which is Granky, makes the play. Boy, it's great to have a good fielding pitcher. So no runs, no hits, thanks to Ramirez. One error, one left, and it's still no score.
No score. Zach Granke got what he was looking for, a low pitch inning. He only made 12 thanks to that leaping catch by Hanley Ramirez. In fact, it would have been an easier inning had Uribe been able to handle the ground ball hit by A.J. Pollock. But nevertheless, Granke will take the 12 pitches. He's now made 89. And here's Fedorovich, followed by Granke, and then Puig. 0 oh and 1. One ball, one strike. So through his five innings, Granke has made 89 pitches. Now into his fifth inning, Miley has made 77. One ball and two strikes. Wade Miley out of Loranger, Louisiana. Pretty good fastball in a good spot. Fedorovich thinking, I think, that that was off the plate. Miley more strikes than balls very much in command ready to make his 80th pitch. Breaking ball. Evens it up now. Two balls two strikes. FedEx then Granky and Puig bottom of the fifth no runs two hits for Arizona. No runs one hit for the Dodgers in direct contrast to the three games that were played over in Phoenix. Breaking ball missed. Those games were 6 nothing, 8-5, eight, 8-6. Eight, the hitters love to play in the great indoors of Arizona. 3 and 2. Breaking ball, foul ball. Of course in thinking about it, when we were last over in Arizona, the roof was open two of the three games. But hitters just love to hit in that ballpark. Then the Dodgers go up to San Francisco. It's 3 2, 2 1, 2 1. Now they come home, no score in the fifth. 3 and 2. And a high fly ball. It's very playable. Cody Ross is there. So Fedorovich a fly ball one down in the fifth. Pitcher, that was an eight pitch at bat for Fedorovich. Zach Granke flied to left field in the third inning. Zach remember silver slugger award winner hit 328 so he can handle a bat. Right. Zach, who lives in Florida, originally a first round pick by the Kansas City Royals back in 2002. 0 oh and 2. Something happened to him last year. I mean, prior to last year, he was a 170 hitter. And then all of a sudden, he hits 328. To get his name mentioned with Don Newcomb. However, when you're talking about Don Newcomb, not only a good hitting pitcher, but Nuke had seven home runs one year. We were talking to some of the Giants during the series, and they were talking about the Rockies, and they said, Boy, Colorado, they can really hit. Down goes Granky. Remember, Colorado will be here. That will be on the 25th, 26th, and 27th of Colorado. So I had that in mind. Colorado can really hit. Well, final score, the Phillies and the Rockies. Rockies 12, Phillies 1. Tulowitzki had three hits. He's batting 360. Charlie Blackman had three hits. He's batting 426. And remember, earlier this month, Charlie Blackman had a six-hit game. So I guess the Giants were right. Colorado can hit. So two out and here's Puig. Walked twice. 
shows bunt each time and fouls this one back. Yesterday made a great catch. The wind was howling. Somehow he twisted, turned, lunged back to his left and made the catch. Puig hits one down the line foul, lower deck. Still 0 and 2. Breaking ball got him looking. So Puig is caught on the curve. That would be six strikeouts. And at the end of five, no score. One, two, three, Anthony. Teams. Over 78,000 came in to see the game. Dodgers led 6 4 in the ninth inning. Jimmy Davenport, the giant third baseman, doubled. That brought up outfielder Willie Kirkland, who tripled, and it looked like it was a one run game. Ah, but it was a giant Dodger game. The Dodgers protested, they pointed, and Jimmy Davenport had missed stepping on third base. Dodgers held on behind reliever Clem Levine and won the game six to five. Of course, a giant Dodger game before 78,000 in the Coliseum. Let's go back to this one. Jimmy Davenport, who happened to be up at AT&T Park yesterday, one of the nicest guys who ever played the game. But imagine missing third when you're on second base. That's a strike to Aaron Hill, then Paul Goldsmith and Miguel Montero. Miley and Granke have each made 90 pitches now, and we're in the sixth. In the dirt, new ball. One and one the count. Aaron Hill grounded into a double play, fouled out. He hit for the cycle twice for Arizona, both times at home. One ball, one strike. Hill missed a lot last year. And maybe Hanley Ramirez was thinking about him. Aaron Hill hit on the hand, suffered a broken hand. And missed a bunch of games. Two and one. Pulled foul. Aaron Hill went to LSU. Born in Visalia. Lives over in Scottsdale now, but went to a lot of games to see the Visalia Oaks. When he was growing up. 
two and two. He was the number one pick by the Blue Jays. Takes and it's strike three. Six strikeouts for Zach Granke. Hill walks away talking to himself. First baseman number 44, Paul Goldsmith. Now the big mountain to climb, Paul Goldsmith, as the hill goes back to the dugout. Goldie walked and struck out, 0 for 1. And a strike. And another strike. Last year, Goldsmith had a very interesting season. Against the Dodgers, he hit 365. But against the other three clubs in the West, he hit 224 against Colorado, 217 against San Diego, and 212 against the Giants. Though the Dodgers hoping they've learned how to pitch to him, since the other three clubs certainly shut him down. Last year, four home runs, 14 RBIs to go with that. Here, he had six home runs, 16 RBIs in his career, and he had all four home runs, 10 ribbies here last year. Paul Goldschmidt. He is a very explosive hitter. Got him. The Goldschmidt. Becomes strikeout number seven. Talk about him explosive. Last year, the first eight days of June, he had 17 runs driven in in the eight games. 17. But not tonight. Strikes out twice. Seven strikeouts for Granky. I think Granky's high, eight. That would be tops on the team. We'll look it up. This year. Oh, and one to Montero. Montero walked in the first inning and then had a great at bat. Oh, sure, he made out, grounded out to Gonzalez, but it was a 12 pitch at bat. And Granky now ready to make pitch number 100. One ball and one strike. So Granky is a strikeout away from his high this year of eight. High again. We were talking earlier about Montero, and I was saying I know he caught over a thousand innings for a couple of years in a row. Since 2009, Miggy, as they call him, has caught 5,091 innings. High drive into deep center field, and that one is gone. So not only catching a lot, he caught one and hit it out. And it's one to nothing, Arizona. So Montero not only had the 12 pitch at bat, now he has the big at bat. To give Arizona the lead, one nothing. Montero's second home run of the year went after a breaking ball and got all of it. He has nine runs batted in. So Montero puts the D backs out front and a strike now to Cody Ross. When the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the sixth inning, It'll be Turner, Ramirez, and Gonzalez. Oh, and one. That's a strike. As he has been fighting it all night, Granky behind in the count, and then he's been able to recover to get seven strikeouts. But he was behind two and one to Montero, and that time it cost him. Oh, and two. 
check swing. That's going to be strike three. So down goes Ross. Eight strikeouts for Granky to tie his year's work in strikeouts. But Arizona leads one nothing. Remember, some great games coming up. Tomorrow at 5 o'clock, Bolsinger and Harron. Sunday at 1, Cole Mentor and Beckett. And then Phillies will be in here. Three night games in a row, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, capped by the fourth game of the series at 7 o'clock. And then the hard-hitting Colorado Rockies on the weekend. Meanwhile, the Dodgers thoroughly shut down. They have one hit. A two out single by Matt Kemp and a strike to Justin Turner. Granke has made 105 pitches, 91 made by Miley. And Granke sitting next to the pitching coach Rick Honeycutt down in the Dodger bullpen, Jamie Wright. Granke muttering in there to his catcher, Tim Fedorovich. Turner badly fooled. So Granky struck out eight. Miley has struck out seven. Two and two. Little roller back to the box. And that'll do it for Turner. One out, sixth inning. Dodgers are 5 and 0 oh against Arizona. The last time the Dodgers won the first six meetings between a team within the division. We had to go back to 1988, Gibby's big year. When the Atlanta Braves, believe it or not, were in the Western Division and the Dodgers beat him first six meetings. That's what the Dodgers are trying to do tonight, but standing in their way and getting taller all the time. Wade Miley. Yes. A fond but distant memory. 1988. Hanley grounded into a double play, struck out. Oh and one. It's now at that stage where you look at who are the Dodgers who have not struck out. Matt Kemp, Juan Uribe, Fedorovich. One and one.
beach ball loose in center field, so Miley takes a little walk on the grass. They get rid of the beach ball, and he'll go back to work. He had to wait for a center fielder, Pollock, to get it. One ball and one strike to Hanley Ramirez. At his feet. Two and one. Miley pitching at home has allowed three home runs this year. Thing that wore out Granky tonight, although he's only given up one run. There were 21 foul balls. Remember we were talking about that? Swings and misses compared to fouls. There were five swings and misses. 21 fouls. And in that big at bat earlier when Montero was up there for 12 pitches, he fouled off seven. And then he came up in the sixth and he hit the home run. So Ramirez gets the walk and here comes Adrian Gonzalez. He had a huge series and especially a big game. He lined one against Brandon McCarty over the right field fence. Went the other way for a home run to left field and for good measure pulled one to right against Trevor Cahill. Dodgers now look to Adrian as they've been looking to him all year. He has a 12 game hitting streak. He has struck out Gonzalez twice. You can't say the hitters have been that aggressive. They have been fooled more often than not. Granky of his eight strikeouts five the hitter was caught looking. Miley has eight strikeouts. Three have been caught looking. And now here's Gonzalez. Matt Kemp on deck. Foul ball. Talking about Granky and strikeouts, we told you eight is his high. He's done that earlier this year. But in his career, when he was with Kansas City back in 2009, he struck out 15. Oh, and one. Low and away. One ball, one strike. Jamie Wright is still throwing in the bullpen. That gives you an idea that perhaps Granky, after making 105 pitches, will be done for the night. He certainly bundled up. One and one. And that's hit down the line. Foul ball. Foul by a foot or so. So near and yet so far. One and two to Adrian. Got all of it, just pulled it a hair. Down the line. One and two, the count to Gonzalez. Miley, meanwhile, we're talking about. Granky and swings and fouls. 28 foul balls against Miley. And he's up to 103. One ball and two strikes. One out, Ramirez at first. One nothing D backs on the home run by Miguel Montero. Got him for the third time tonight. Miley strikes out Gonzalez. It also gives him nine strikeouts. Ramirez holding at first. Breaking ball in the dirt. So bad ball fooled him. Go with two out. Yeah, Matt Kemp. Miley has allowed one hit, and that was a single by Matt Kemp in the fourth inning. Earlier in the second inning, Matt hit the ball up the middle, but he didn't hit it very hard. So that Hill was able to race over. Aaron backhanded it and threw him out. So the tying run, Hanley Ramirez still at first with two out. Outfield deep, just about straight away. Foul back. 
Pollock started to go slightly a little towards right center and apparently somebody gestured and he moved quickly back to where he is now. Well the outfield is very deep. Hanley held on by Goldsmith. On one. And that's popped up. Into right field. Para with the gold glove is there. That'll be that. No runs. No hits. A walk. A man left. Petrovic putting on the gear. And Granke is sitting on the bench. One nothing. Montero in the sixth inning. So Jamie Wright will now pick up. Also, of course, Granky made 105 pitches this early in the year. It was time to get him out of there anyway. So Jamie Wright will be pitching as we go to the seventh inning. Prado, Owings, and Pollock in that order. Jamie has done very well when brought in. He was called the long man, but he's been very reliable. ERA of threes in his ninth game, and he has worked eight and two third innings. Wade Miley all pumped up after getting out of the jam in the eighth inning. Not really much of a jam. He walked a man, but I guess that's a jam tonight. But boy, as he wound up, Mike Harkey. The big pitching coach talking to him. So the kid from Louisiana from Little Loranger is pitching a gem, a one hitter for six innings. Miley also has made 106 pitches. 106 or 105 for Granky enough to take him out. So here's Prado. Fly to right, struck out, 0 for 1. Fastball strike. No balls in one strike to Martin. And another strike. Oh, and two the count. One run, three hits for Arizona. No runs, one hit. Clean as a whistle, single to center by Matt Kemp, who was wild pitched to second base. And that's as far as he got. In the very first inning, the Dodgers had Yasiel Puig walk, and he got to third, the only Dodger to get to third. For the Diamondbacks, outside of the home run by Montero, 
They had one man get to second base, Goldschmidt. So it's been that kind of a night. 0 oh 2. Foul back. Prado, good veteran hitter. One and two, a little slider down and away. Prado came out of a slump against the Dodgers. He had been one for 16, and then in the last game of the series, went three for four. He is Owings hitting back of him. Fedorovich hanging off the outside of the plate. And a chopper up the middle. Ramirez to his left. Throws him out. So Prado grounds to third second base with the shortstop Ramirez going over to make the play and the batter now Chris Owings who has struck out rolled a short 0 for 2. Owings kind of up and down. He was 0 for 11. Then he went 5 for 9 coming in here. He's 0 for 2. Ball one. Owings leading all National League rookies. 16 hits, two more than Wong of the Cardinals. That's a strike, one and one. Tell you, a fellow, the Dodgers could lose, use tonight. He was fine while he was here. He's now with the Cardinals. Mark Ellis. Mark Ellis career against Wade Miley is hitting 435 and he has four home runs against Miley and only 23 at bats but he is with the Cardinals. That's going to be a strike. So the rookie doesn't say anything he smiles at the plate umpire. Yes sir. One and two. One out, seventh inning, one to nothing, Arizona. Still one and two. Cliff Pennington, the rookie, has as his backup after Owings was able to win the battle with D.D. Gregorius coming out of spring training. One and two to Chris Owings. In the dirt. Jamie Wright is due to bat fourth when the Dodgers come up. So J.P. Howell is down in the pen now. Dodgers will have Van Slyke, Uribe, and Fedorovich. And then Wright. Two balls, two strikes. Fast ball got him looking. So the hitters are taking some pretty good pitches. Look at Fedorovich right there. So right picks up one. The batter now, A.J. Pollock, who struck out, reached on an error. One and only count. Pollock has struck out, reached on an error. J.J. Puts, the veteran reliever, is now up in the D back bullpen. So maybe after 105 pitches, 
Wade Miley's going to come out as well. That's going to go up the middle for a base hit for Pollock. So a two out single would normally bring up Miley. The number 36, Wade Miley. And Wade Miley's coming up. So Pollock keeps the door open for Miley who has struck out. And remember last time up Miley hit a line drive and it was a leaping one hand catch by Hanley Ramirez. So you have two fine pitchers at the top of their games and each one is also a pretty good hitter. Although I would have to guess Granke would be the better fielder. So two out in the seven one nothing Arizona. San Diego leading the Giants one nothing that's in the sixth inning. Granke allowed three hits. Jamie allowing his first hit. Poised is Pollock. Miley a big rip. You don't expect the number eight hitter to try to steal with two out. Though you wouldn't expect him to go but then again Miley's a pretty good hitter. Ground ball plugged up by Turner and that'll do it. So coming up in the seven Van Slyke Uribe and Fedorovich with Arizona leading one to nothing. Hello sunshine. at Adrian Gonzalez and just took it from there. Miley's career 10 strikeouts in a game against Colorado. Tonight he has eight as he takes over on the mound in the seventh inning. The so Wade Miley out there now facing Scott Van Slyke who has struck out and walked. Fly ball to right field deep. Para goes back to the track. It's gone over the wall. Van Slyke has tied it up 1 1. So Scott Van Slyke going the other way. Is strong enough to clear the right field wall. Looked like it was an off speed pitch, and it got over as Para was frustrated watching it go out. And that's enough for Miley. Tough break. 
for him. Good break for the Dodgers. So Granky is off the hook. Miley goes out even. Van Slyke is the Arizona villain. And we'll be back right after this. right field which is what he just did against the left hand to Wade Miley Parra went back but it carried over and that ties up the game 1 1 a battle of home runs Montero and Van Slyke the starting pitchers are out of there Granky and Miley now leaving in favor of puts and the Dodgers will have Juan Uribe. For Scott Van Slyke, that was his second home run of the year. Both of them against Wade Miley to haunt Miley as he goes back into the clubhouse. That's a strike to Uribe, who has hit a couple of balls in the air to center for outs. So how tough a game can you get? Home runs for each side, 1-1, one, one, bottom of the seven. Foul ball out of play. Quig, who's always there to celebrate. Always if it's not, <laughs> he grabs Ben Slack by the beard. If it's not Uribe, it's Ramirez, Gonzalez, but Quig's always in the middle of it. 0-2. Oh And ground ball up the middle. Owings, great sliding catch and throw. Boy, he does that well. He did it once or twice over in Arizona. So he can slide and still, almost like being on a turntable, he goes to his left, slides, gloves up, and before you know it, he's made the throw. Beautiful play. One out in the seventh. Meanwhile, Wade Miley, who has shaved his head, since the last time we saw him, he pitched his hair off, but he goes out in a 1 1 tie. Fedorovich popped up, had an eight pitch at bat, and flied to left. And he hits a high fly ball into left center, but it's playable. Pollock on the track. So, two out in the seventh inning. And the batter now will be Sean Figgins coming up to hit for Jamie Wright. Sean Figgins will bat left handed. He is one for three hitting left handed. And of course, among other things, as Withrow warms up in the Dodger bullpen, Figgins will put a little extra pressure. The infield will be thinking about bunt.
down in the Arizona bullpen Brad Ziegler and Oliver Perez. So Figgins at 5'8. At third base, Prado has to play him on the grass. Goldschmidt, however, is back. And the strike. The outfield split, gap in right center. Ross is up in left field. 0 and 1 to Sean. Off the plate. One ball and one strike. JJ puts. Been playing professionally since 1999. 37 years old. One and two the count. Puts had some great saves coming out of the bullpen. As many as 45 for the D backs back in 2011. He had as many as 40 saves for the Mariners back in 07. Two years ago, he had 32 saves. Last year, he struggled. J.J. Putz, born in Trenton, Michigan, went to the University of Michigan. You probably know that story, the fact he went to school when Tom Brady was there playing football. Two and two to Figgins. How back? So a couple of veterans. Figgins has certainly been around. He started playing pro ball in 1997. He's 36. So a 37-year-old pitcher, a 36-year-old pinch hitter in the dirt. J.J. Putz, a professional baseball pitcher. His wife is a two-time All-American softball player at Michigan. She was a second baseman. Three and two the count. Great splitter that has helped puts accomplish a lot. Fastball pulled back at first, but Goldie's there with the glove, and that'll do it. But Scott Van Slyke did it, going the other way. A home run to right field against the left-hander Wade Miley, and that ties up the game, and we go to the eighth, 1-1. Mazda dealers 
and by California Smokers Helpline. For a free plan to help you quit smoking, call 1-800-NO-BUTS. That's 1-800-662-8887. Boy, we have a dandy work in here tonight at Dodger Stadium. Game one of the three-game series, and it's a 1-1 tie. Way back at the very beginning, we talked about the fact, don't let the numbers fool you. Don't let the fact the Dodgers had beaten Arizona five straight, or the fact that the D-backs were in last place trailing by seven, or the fact they had just been swept by the Mets and came here with a six-game losing streak. They are a much better club, and they've won six of nine at Dodger Stadium each of the last three years. So Trammell, along with Gibson, have a 1-1 tie, and we go to the eighth, thanks to Scott Van Slyke and Miguel Montero, each hitting a home run. So now in the eighth inning, top of the order, Gerardo Parra, Aaron Hill, and then Paul Goldsmith. Parra, single to right, single to left, hit back to the box sharply. That was a good defensive play by Granke. Fastball on the corner for a strike. 0 and 1. Bar 2 for 3. Foul back, so Parry in a hole now. No balls and two strikes. Para Hill and Goldsmith against Chris Withrow, who is in his eighth game. He's worked eight innings and he's allowed one run. Fouled away. Withrow out of Midland, Texas, facing Gerardo Parra from Venezuela. Chris, 6'4, 220, ideal size to be a big league pitcher. Just turned 25, April 1. Fastball hit to straightaway center. Kemp is there. One out in the eighth inning, and Aaron Hill, the batter. Couple of Penrod and Sam, huh? Leaning over the railing in their own wonderful little world. Aaron Hill grounded into a double play, fouled out, struck out, 0 for 3. 0 and 1. Dodgers pick Withrow first round pick, so you got a couple of very talented people here with Aaron Hill at the plate. No balls and one strike. 0 and 2. Withrow almost went to Baylor University, but opted to go professional. 0 and 2. Ground ball up the middle. Ramirez catches up, kind of clutches, and that made it closer. But Hanley just did nip him. Two down. The scoop, and then watch. There's the clutch. So two out, eighth inning. And Paul Goldsmith coming up with Miguel Montero on deck. Goldsmith has walked and struck out twice. And Montero, who homered for the only Arizona run, waiting behind him. Ball one. Pretty good 93 mile an hour fastball just out of the zone. Yeah. 
One and one. You have to be quick to do what Goldschmidt does. He drops the bat so that the the end of the bat is almost facing the ground. But by the time the pitcher delivers, then it's another story. There it goes. One and two. With throw. Throws a good sinking fastball, slider, curveball. One and two. Off the plate. Goldsmith, three home runs, ten runs batted in. Striking out twice tonight. He has struck out 17 times. Two and two. Change off speed 78 miles an hour might have been out of the strike zone as well and Goldsmith strikes out a third time take a look at the location up there big slow breaking ball we're heading to the bottom of the eighth one one. in the sixth inning and Scott Van Slyke against Wade Miley going the other way clearing the right field wall to give the Dodgers the one one tie Van Slyke second home run and he gets the ball club even so now Puig Turner and Ramirez coming up in the bottom of the eighth inning the paid attendance tonight forty seven thousand Six hundred and eighty. Forty seven. Six eight oh. It has the feeling more of a playoff game than a game between a first place team and the last place team. Remember the Dodgers tied with the Giants. Arizona came in here in last place seven back. Withrow made 12 pitches to retire the D backs in the eighth. And now we'll see about J.J. Puts. Who had to pick up after Van Slyke's home run for Wade Miley. Oh, and one. Dodgers, even the young ones, very conscious of J.J. Puts and the splitter. Brad Ziegler throwing in the pen. One thing about puts if the Dodgers get somebody on and we see now Brad Ziegler out there on the mound so it kind of snuck him in there. The puts made his appearance retired the side in the seventh and now Brad Ziegler. One ball one strike. 
Puig walked twice, struck out, 0 for 1. Sidearm sinker again missing. 2 and 1 the count. Brad Ziegler out of Pratt, Kansas, lives in Missouri, went to Southwest Missouri State, was pretty much of a, just another pitcher until he became a submariner. Two and two to Puig. Ziegler and Albert Pujols grew up about a half an hour apart, played against and with each other. Just did get a piece of that. Still two and two. We came into the game hitting 250 with a home run and five runs batted in. And a little low, three and two. Waiting on deck, Justin Turner. And that's a little low. So Puig gets aboard. He walks for the third time tonight. And the batter will be Turner. Turner walked, struck out, hit back to the box, 0 for 2. When the Diamondbacks come up in the ninth, Montero, Ross, and Prado, and you have Hanley Ramirez on deck, so you're wondering, are they going to ask Turner to bunt? Prado is in on the grass at third. He's going to show bunt and pops it foul, 0 and 1. Ramirez and Gonzalez to follow. We'll see if the bunt's still on. Turner, another check with Bundy. Perez and Perez warming up. Oliver in the Arizona pen. Chris in the Dodger pen. No balls and one strike. Puig leaning on his right leg. Not going. And the pitch is low and Turner laid off and Puig was down the line, but he just did get back. Very close. Aaron Hill. Now we'll have a little argument at first base. Puig bluffed, but then stopped, then got too far. Hill tried to cut in and he just did get back on the bag. It wasn't really that close, but where Gibby was in the dugout, maybe it looked closer, but certainly not on videotape. The other day in San Francisco, we had a review. It took almost five minutes. But this one really isn't worth the review. Trammell, I think, put a thumbs down. To Mike Harkey, and that was the message. And Gibby decides, okay, the umpires were right. Jeff Nelson, the first base umpire, had to get around a couple of big men around that bag. So, okay, Puig back, one ball and one strike to Turner. Justin trying to get the bunt down, and looks like he's showing bunt again. And fouled it. So one and two the count. Well, will they force the issue and try another bunt? We'll see. We reading to see whether the bunt is on. Turner looking at Bundy. One one bottom of the eighth. A bluff by Ziegler. 
off the rubber. Ziegler made his major league debut. He was 28 years old, so he waited a while before he finally got here. And that looked like he was going to swing had the pitch been around the plate. With Ziegler, you know, you're going to get a two seamer, that's a sinker, a four seamer, a fastball, then he has a cutter, a slider, a changeup. And Hanley waits on deck. Two and two. And got him throw to first. Puig back. So Turner can't bunt, winds up striking out. And the batter now will be Hanley Ramirez. Hanley Ramirez going head to head. One for four in the past against Ziegler. Adrian Gonzalez is two for four in the past against Ziegler. So here's Hanley. Hit into a double play, struck out and walked. One run, four hits for Arizona. One run, two hits for the Dodgers. Puig is at first, one out, bottom of the eighth. Off the plate, nice backhanded save by Montero. The Giants have lost two to one. That's eight straight one run games they've been in. Eight in a row. The Padres got an unearned run against Matt Kane early. Got a pinch hit home run by Yasmani Grandal. They win it two to one behind Tyson Ross. Houston Street closed it. There was a home run in the ninth inning by Brandon Belt. And that sinker is low, 2 and 0. Houston Street, besides giving up the home run, struck out the side. Eight straight one run games. Ah. Puig looking for an opening, 2 and 0 the count. He's leaning. Not going. 2 and 1 to Hanley. So Brad Ziegler, 6'4, 210, originally drafted by the Phillies, came to the A's to stay from 08 through 11, and that's when he moved over to Arizona. Last two years, the opposition has hit only 228 against him. Last year, Ziegler saved 13, and his record, eight wins and one loss. Even better than the year before, when he had six wins and one loss. Two and one. Little nubber on the chalk, picked up by Montero, throws on a bounce to get him. What a play by Miguel Montero. Whoa. Swinging bunt, they used to call it. Ramirez tops it up along third. Somehow, not only does Montero pick the ball up, he has lost his balance and how he threw it accurately. Look at this on one leg, and he got it straight. A uh, one hop to Goldsmith. Huge play by Miguel Montero. Terrific play. So with two out in the eighth inning and a 1-1 tie, they will take the bat right out of Adrian Gonzalez's hands. If anybody's going to beat him, it's not going to be Gonzalez. So in a moment, it'll be Matt Kemp. In looking at Ziegler and Kemp, Matt Kemp is one for 11 with five strikeouts against Ziegler. You wonder why they walked Gonzalez.
So Gonzalez gets the intentional walk. And we'll see if that pays off. Montero, who just made that remarkable play to get Ramirez, now out to talk to Ziegler. Kirk Gibson with a veteran battery here. Miggy and Ziegler. Aaron Hill wants to be in on the meeting and Kemp waits and 47,000 cheer him on. Now Gibby wants to go out and do his own talking. After Matt Kemp, we have Scott Van Slyke. Hope you'll be out here with us. Remember, tomorrow's a 5 o'clock game. Sunday, 1-10. Van Slyke, the momentary hero. He tied up the game. I'm sure Ziegler knows Matt Kemp is one for 11 against him. I'm sure Matt Kemp doesn't even want to think about being just one for 11. Kemp robbed of a hit. Nice play by Aaron Hill in the second inning. Matt single to center and fly to right. So two on, two out, eighth inning, 1-1, one, one, and the crowd really into it. Breaking ball off the plate. One ball, no strikes. And a good sinking two seamer for a strike. One ball, one strike. Ziegler's earned run average last year was 2.2. Fastball hit the short. They'll get the force play, and that's that. No runs, no hits, two left at the end of eight. Thanks to a great play by Miguel Montero on the topper by Ramirez. Look at this. Big spin, off balance, and yet a one hopper to Goldsmith, and we're still locked in. One, one. and watch every out-of-market game live and true HD. So often happens a fellow makes a great play as the first man up the next inning. 
and that certainly is fulfilled with Miguel Montero. Montero made that brilliant defensive play on the ball hit by Ramirez has also played the biggest moment offensively for Arizona when he homered in the sixth inning. So Miguel Montero one of the hardest workers in the game in a 1 1 tie in the ninth. Montero has caught over 5000 innings. Yadier Molina has caught more over the same stretch. What's the really hard part is to catch a lot and produce offensively. Ball two. Miguel led the major leagues in innings caught and RBIs in 2011 and in 2012. And ball three. He had 86 RBIs in 2011 and 88 in 2012 and he's backed up by Cody Ross. 3 and 0 to Montero. And low for ball four. So Montero walks a second time. First walk given up by Withrow. Granky while he was in there walked a couple. Number seven, Cody Ross. Tony Campana will now run for Miguel Montero. The Campana who plays center field will run. And here's Cody Ross, the left fielder. Montero getting fives for the home run. He's been on base three times. Campana taking over for him. Cody Ross returning to the active list. He had been out with a bad hip. Cody is grounded out in the first inning to second base. Hit the ball sharply. Granky made a good play to get him in the fourth. And he struck out in the sixth. Campana has stolen two out of three. One one in the ninth. Uribe on the grass. Campana goes got a good jump throw by Fedorovich the tag he's in there. The difference was the jump. It was a good throw by Fedorovich, but as the old story in the big leagues, you don't steal on the catcher. I think Mattingly is going to argue, but straight steal, hand is there before the tag. Though so Mattingly will go out, they'll be showing this, looking at it. Tag on the hip, the left hand on the bag. Mattingly looking over to the dugout and somebody will give him thumbs up or down and Tim Wallach says forget it skip. So Mattingly comes back good call. Stolen base by Tony Campana that's why he was in there. So Ross up there with a runner at second and nobody out that close but it was a good call by the umpire. That would be Marcus Patillo. So the Dodgers threatened and failed in the eighth and now here come the D backs Ross Prado and Owings trying to pick up Campana. Hit to the right side that's a good at bat to get him over to third. So Cody Ross goes the other way. Tiebreaker now 90 feet away and the batter will be Martin Prado. Prado flied to right, struck out, grounded out, 0 for 3. Dodger infield has to play up. Puig is very shallow in right. Van Slyke about normal in left. And pretty deep for Matt Kemp.
Ball one. One run, four hits for Arizona. One run, two hits for the Dodgers. Check. No swing. Two and oh. Arizona hitting just 191 with runners in scoring position. Parra was hitting 102 for 20. Goldschmidt was hitting 133, 2 for 15. And Montero was 2 for 14, hitting 143. So they will put Prado on, and it's a wild pitch instead, and the run scores. Talk about a break. The Withrow has one getaway when all they want to do is put Prado on, and the Dodgers are down two to one. So Campana certainly did his job. He walks for Montero, steals second, takes third on a ground ball, and then the throw is over the head of Fedorovich. Couldn't do anything but maybe touch it with the Met. No chance to get Campana. So a wild, wild pitch on an intentional walk. So now the damage is done. Proud is going to walk anyway. Two to one in favor of Arizona. Chris Owings struck out twice, grounded out coming up. You certainly expect wild pitches, of course. But it's a shock to see one on an intentional pitch outside of the strike zone. And the Dodgers now with that wild pitch. They've had 10 wild pitches. Honeycutt has gone out to just try and calm Withrow down, I believe. Brandon League is throwing in the Dodger bullpen, but. I believe Honeycutt is just out there to consume a little time. One of those hang in there type speeches. Owings 0 for 3 followed by Pollock 1 for 3. The meeting is broken up. Dr. Honeycutt has uh, given his lecture and Withrow trying to recover. So precious to find a run tonight. Took home runs by Montero and Van Slyke. And then to have a wild pitch when all you're trying to do is intentionally walk a man. That's a crusher. So Honeycutt had to go out and talk to Withrow. Off the rubber. That run, a walk, a stolen base, a ground ball, and a wild pitch. That's the first run that Withrow has allowed. He had allowed one run before unearned. One ball and no strikes to Chris Owings. When the Dodgers bat in the bottom of the ninth, Van Slyke, Uribe, and Fedorovich do up. And ball two. Remember, of course, among the other pinch hitting candidates in the Dodger dugout, you have Andre Ethier and Carl Crawford. Among others. How about a 400 hitter in D. Gordon? 2 and 0. Oh. And in the dirt, and that's going to get away. Down to second will go Prado. So Withrow was high with one and low with another. It's a wild pitch. Fedorovich, who's been good, unable to block that one.
Still only one out. You've had two walks, a stolen base, two wild pitches, and Owings up there with a count three and zero. Oh. Prado at second. And he walked in. Well, they've been out there once. Now the batter will be A.J. Pollock. For Withrow, of course, the battle is to collect himself. A.J. Pollock has struck out, reached on an error, single, and that will be all for Withrow. The Mattingly going to the plate umpire, which means a double switch. And we'll see how that develops. And while we do, we'll leave for this. League, the new pitcher will go into Matt Kemp's spot as he talks to Sean Figgins. And League now getting in his work. For Chris Withrow, the best you can say it was a learning experience. He made 26 pitches and just lost it in the ninth inning. Three walks, stolen base, and of course, the wild pitch trying to intentionally walk Prado. That was a killer. And then a wild pitch that sent Prado to second. So all Chris can do is file that away till next time and A.J. Pollock will face Brandon Lee. So Prado at second Owings at first league facing Pollock. And a shot off the leg of league and he's going to have a one hopper to first for the out. And the runners move up to second and third. Eric Chavez will now come up and bat for Ziegler. So Pollock hits it hard, but right back at the pitcher's leg. Dodgers get a break there. League soft throw to first. Gonzalez able to handle it. And the runners move up. So here is Eric Chavez coming up to bat for. Ziegler. Chavez, left hand hitter, veteran. Ziegler made 23 pitches and first pitch ball one. When the Dodgers come up, they're due to have Van Slyke, Uribe. Fedorovich and then Ethier, and you have to guess they would hit for Fedorovich. One and one to Chavez. Eric, big man for many, many years in Oakland. In the dirt. 
Two and one. Fedorovich has saved so many in the dirt the last couple of days. But the wild pitch on an intentional ball. He couldn't get that one. And then he couldn't block the next one in the dirt. Two and one. Fouled away two and two. Eric Chavez has had a long and wonderful career. Among other things. He'll never be forgotten by Yusmeri Petit. Petit was pitching a no hitter. Two out ninth inning. Chavez got a base hit to break it up. That was last year in September. Goose is wild here. Little roller slowly. Turner to Gonzalez, but the damage is done. One run on no hits. Three walks, a stolen base, and two wild pitches. Arizona leads two to one. the ninth inning it'll be Carl Crawford though he figured the left hand hitting outfielders would see action Crawford as a pinch hitter and Andre Ethier already got into the game Tuffy Goswitch takes over behind the plate and Addison Reed on the mound Addison Reed for three years with the White Sox last year he saved 40 games the year before 29 the opposition Last year hit 215 against him. He's 6'4, 215, 25 years old. He'd be 26 two days after Christmas. He's from Etiwanda in California and went to San Diego State. I guess Etiwanda is very close to Rancho Cucamonga. So, meanwhile, it has been a marvelous night for Miguel Montero. Hitting the home run and then making a great play on a little nubber up along third off the bat of Hanley Ramirez. So the Dodgers trying to recover from a very rocky ninth inning. And it's up to Carl Crawford to lead the way. Crawford hitting 244. No home runs. Two runs batted in. And a strike on one. Addison Reed, the book says, fastball, slider, changeup with a little sink to it. And another strike, 0 and 2, the count to Crawford. Addison Reed, when he went to San Diego State, he succeeded Steven Strasburg as the ace of the staff. 
That took off one and two at 92. Meanwhile, Mike Harkey and Alan Trammell. Two balls. Well, check it one and two. That evens it up two and two. Two and two to Crawford. Foul ball down the line, out of play. We're talking about the Giants, eight straight one run games. Dodgers are in their fourth. The third game. Decided two to one if it's going to be decided by that score tonight. Two and two. Three and two. Well, the D backs got three walks in the ninth inning. Three and two to Crawford. High fly ball. It's playable. Calling for it is right field to par. One away. Third baseman number five, Juan Uribe. So Crawford flies out. One down. Juan Uribe twice hit fly balls to center. Last time up grounded out. And after Uribe, Fedorovich is due up. We'll see. Fastball missed. Crowd of 47,680. D. Gordon has a helmet. Doesn't necessarily mean. They didn't do anything but run, so he walked away empty handed, but he did get the sleeve they used to cover hands when sliding. Sliced foul out of play, one and one. The rebate came into the game hitting 375. A restless Gordon now has the bat. Addison Reed going to work. One out in the ninth. Fedorovich waiting on deck. And a little low. Two balls and one strike. So he went all the way with Crawford. Now two and one to Uribe. Fedorovich followed by Ethier. Matt Kemp out of the game. Two to one, Arizona. Two and two. Uribe checking whether it was a strike or not. Meanwhile, Puig and Ramirez having their conversation. Puig walked three times, went 0 for 1. Hanley walked once, went 0 for 3. Fouled away. Though so it's still two and two to Juan Uribe. Tomorrow at five o'clock on the Dodgers will have Dan Harron. Mike Bolsinger will be pitching for Arizona on Sunday. Cole Mentor and Beckett. Two and two. High foul might be playable coming over as Goldsmith. No, nope, no chance. Well back in. Follow the bouncing ball right into his hand. Two and two. The 
It was a battle of home runs tonight by Montero with the bases empty in the sixth. Van Schleich leading off the seventh. And then three walks, a stolen base, and two wild pitches. And that's whacked to left. If it's fair, it's gone. Down the line, gone. And the game is tied at two. Beat him up, especially look for Puig. Some, somewhere down there, there's Puig. And it's Gonzalez and Puig pounding on him. <laughs> that figured that we have a 2 2 tie. Now Ramirez throws a slug at him. Boy, Uribe, his third home run, his seventh run batted in. And now Fedorovic, the batter. With Andre Ethier on deck. With no doubt it was going to reach. It was just a question of hooking whether it would go fair or foul, and it went fair. So we have a 2 2 tie in the ninth inning. Fedorovic, a fly ball to right, very playable. Para is there. So three home runs in the game tonight, and we're tied at two. And Andre Ethier coming up. Uribe knew it. He knew it was going to reach, but it went right down the line, hit the screen, lands back on the field, and look at the Dodgers. Their favorite son has tied up the game. Now, Andre Ethier just getting into the game, finishing up in center field. For Matt Kemp. Fastball for ball one. Addison Reed, 0 and 1 coming in. That's the second home run he's allowed. It's ninth game. One ball and no strikes to Andre Ethier. Fouled away. Andre in that double switch getting into the game hitting 220 with one home run 10 runs batted in. Matt Kemp rather animated and there of course is the reason and now he hits Ryu on the head. High fly ball but playable Ross is there. All right. We've got nine and we're not finished. Neither is real. Yuri, <laughs> all of them. We're heading to the tenth. One last look at that home run by Uribe. Right down the line and gone. And to the tenth we go. Two two.
in the game in left field. Andre Ethier came in in a double switch. He flied out. Juan Uribe hits a home run right down the left field line, and it sends it into extra innings. For Arizona, in extra innings, this will be their second. They won one on the road. For the Dodgers in extra innings, this is their fourth, and the Dodgers are one and two in extra inning games, one and one at home. Gerard Opara, Aaron Hill, and Paul Goldsmith against Brandon Lee. So we start fresh. Granky right with throw and now Lee Miley puts Ziegler and now Reed ground ball and no play. So Gerardo Parra one way or another finds his way aboard. And the battle will be Aaron Hill. Ball went off the bare hand of league and that took it away any chance for Ramirez. So once again the Dodgers have their hands full. Parra leading off with three hits tonight. He is one for two in stolen bases but the Dodgers are going to have to check league by trying to stop that ball with his bare hand but he's laughing so I assume he's okay. They instinctively will go after any ball hit anywhere near the mound. I remember Drysdale would try to stick his foot in the way or his leg or a hand anything. Had he let it go by it could very well have been that Ramirez might have had a play but he reached back took any steam off the ball and that took Hanley out of the play. So for Parra he's three for five Greg Harrell the Dodger trainer is out there. Mattingly and Greg are assured he doesn't need a warm up throw. Well, we'll see about that. And Aaron Hill, who is 0 for 4, coming up. So Lee, who came in and got Pollock and Chavez, now on his own in the 10th. Aaron Hill grounded into a double play, fouled out, struck out, grounded to short. Dodger bullpen is very thin because of all the games they've been playing and innings in the last few days. And you wonder about Kenley Jansen and Brian Wilson. Well, Wilson made 28 pitches yesterday. Jansen made 30 pitches yesterday. So from the looks of things, it's up to lead. Oh, and one. Remember the D backs don't run much, but here they are in the 10th inning. They throw the book away. Para held on by Adrian Gonzalez. 0 and 1. Brandon League is another veteran. He's been playing professionally since 2001. Born in Sacramento, lives in Honolulu. Second round pick when he was in high school in Honolulu by the Toronto Blue Jays. And he was with them from 04 through 09. One ball and one strike from the Blue Jays. He went to the Mariners. He was with them from 10. And then came to the Dodgers last year after arriving at the end of the 2012 season. Last year, the opposition hit better than 300 against him, and his ERA was over five. Fastball, a strike, one and two. Two thousand and eleven was the big year for Brandon League with the Mariners. He saved thirty seven. 
Two and two. Power at first, nobody out, tenth inning. Tied at two. That home runs by Montero, Van Slyke, and Uribe. Fastball whack foul. Boy, he really jumped on that 93 mile an hour Swifty. Two and two. On deck, Paul Goldsmith. Got him inside corner. Brandon Lee makes a heck of a pitch to get Aaron Hill. Just drifted in, got the edge, and down he goes. One out, a runner at first. Now, here's Goldsmith. Goldsmith has walked and struck out three times. You don't think he's hungry. He's been on base 41 of 49 games against the Dodgers. Got on base tonight only on a walk in the first inning. So Gibby has his power hitter at the plate. Para at first. Goldsmith trying to golf that and Fedorovich is hurting. Timeout. Oh and one to count. The Dodgers now are going to talk about possible interference allowing Goldsmith to go to first. We had interference on a foul ball charged against the Dodgers in the Giants series when Adrian Gonzalez stayed at the plate on a little foul. The glove, though the tipping of the catcher's mitt, and Goldsmith is indeed awarded first. It's truly legitimate. Conti is out there, stand checking on Fedorovich. So, Goldsmith with the catcher tipping the bit. Two on, one out. Dodgers interested right now in Fedorovic. He took a lick. I'm all right, he said. So first and second with one out as Fedorovic reaching for the pitch and his glove gets in the way of the bat. Tuffy Goswitch, the catcher, is now coming up. Goswitch, remember, came in after Campana had run for Montero. Two on, one out, 10th inning, 2-2. Two -two. And a strike. Tuffy spent a lot of years in the minor leagues. He has had just nine at bats. He is 0 for 9, and he has struck out three. Hitting after him is Cody Ross. Ground ball to Ramirez, down to second, on to first, double play. So the Dodgers off the hook as Gosowicz hits into the double play. Brandon Lee gets out of the jam. Take another look. Turner turning took a big hit from the big first baseman Goldsmith, but he still made the play. And we're going to the bottom of the 10th, 2-2.
at first. He hits a lot of home runs and he can also try to break up a double play. Watch him go and make Turner really go upside down. But Turner hung in there and made the double play. So a lot of people will congratulate Brandon Lee, but look at Justin knocked upside down by the big first baseman, but still Turner made the play. Now it'll be Turner hitting second in the inning as Puig will lead it off. And on the mound, a former starting pitcher, Randall Delgado, who was struggling and was sent to the pen. Josh Colemender will take Delgado's spot in the starting rotation so that not Delgado, but Colemender will be pitching against the Dodgers on Sunday. But right now, Delgado will be facing Yasiel Pui. Delgado's from Panama. High fastball at 95 to say hello to Puig. Yasiel has walked three times and struck out. One and oh. Whoa, what a swing. One and one to count. About as hard as he can swing. One ball, one strike. Ball two. Delgado, 6'3, 200 pounder, can throw hard. He just hit 95. Originally signed by the Braves. First came up in 2011. Came over last year to Arizona. Two and one. And a strike. Boy, he's throwing hard. The hero right now, Juan Uribe, his home run forced it into overtime. Two balls, two strikes. And Puig strikes out. So one out in the 10th inning. That's a tough night. You go up to the plate five times and you never hit the ball. You walk three, strike out two, and now Justin Turner. Turner, who survived that hard all out legitimate slide by Goldsmith, now coming up. He's 0 for 3 with a walk, struck out twice. And Puig scratching his head, figuring out how do I hit Delgado? 0 and 1. On deck, Hanley Ramirez. And a strike. So Delgado comes in, strikes out Puig, has Turner 0 and 2. Basically, fastball, curve, and change. Almost threw that of the backstop. Delgado was only 16 when he signed with the Braves. And he came to Arizona in the deal that sent Justin Upton and Chris Johnson to Atlanta. That deal brought Martin Prado over here with Arizona. Still one and two. Boy, he's throwing hard. The difference, of course, from being a starter. He just comes in and they say throw as hard as you can for as long as you can. In the Dodger bullpen, Chris Perez begins to warm up. Check swing. He's done. So Turner strikes out. Delgado strikes out the first two. Delgado coming into the game. Had an earned run average over seven in 11 innings, 11 and a third. He's now worked 12 innings and struck out nine. Yeah. 
Hanley Ramirez hit into a double play, struck out, walked, topped the ball up along third. That's when Montero made that wonderful play to throw him out. Oh, and one. Adrian Gonzalez waiting on deck. Delgado a long look now he's ready. Fouled away 0 and 2. Hanley Ramirez is three for eight against Delgado. That would be a 375 batting average. Dodgers with home runs against him. Andre Ethier, Adrian Gonzalez, and Matt Kemp and Juan Uribe. Uribe has two against Delgado. High fly ball. Coming a long way as Power can't make the play. Hanley rounds first and holds on. So they were playing him so deep, Para couldn't catch up to it. Hanley gets a pop fly single, and the batter will be Adrian Gonzalez. Looked like just a routine fly ball until you realize Para was so deep. Hill couldn't get to it, and neither can Gerardo. So Adrian Gonzalez going up against Randall Delgado. Gonzalez is three for six with a home run. And let's see about Gibby now. And he's taking the ball from Delgado. They'll go to the left handed Joe Thatcher to go after Adrian Gonzalez and we'll be back. came out of the Frontier League where he pitched for the River City Bandits and Joe Thatcher and Adrian Gonzalez were teammates in 2010 with the San Diego Padres and now they go head to head against each other with the ball game on the line. Thatcher had a great year that year when they were teammates in 2010. The opposition hit 185 against Joe and his earned run average that year was 1.2. Adrian Gonzalez that year had 31 home runs and 101 RBI. So two guys who had a great year together now head to head. And slapped into left field. 
Ramirez to second and holding. And coming up will be D. Gordon to try and win the game. So Adrian Gonzalez just goes with the flow and slaps it into left field. After Puig and Turner strike out, Ramirez and Gonzalez come up each with their first hit of the night. And now Gordon has the pinch hitter against Thatcher. Gordon batting for Brandon Lee. Goldsmith looking to the bench. Am I coming up for a bunt? And they tell him, no, go back. High flag, slicing foul towards the stands, in the stands. 0 and 1. D. Gordon hitting 373. He has a home run. He has six runs batted in. He has stolen 10 out of 11. And he's trying to get Hanley Ramirez home. Adrian Gonzalez at first and Thatcher in relief of Randall Delgado. On one to D. Oh and two. Two runs, five hits for each side. The Dodgers committing two errors. Hanley can take a pretty good lead with a left-hand hitter up. Ground ball is short. The quick feed. They get the force. And we're going to the 11th inning as Gordon hits into the force play and Thatcher does his job despite giving up the hit to his old buddy Adrian Gonzalez. We're still tied at two. Homer's in the sex the center field for a one nothing lead. Scott Van Slyke clears the right field wall to tie it up 1 1 in the Dodgers down on a wild pitch from Chris Withrow trying to walk Paul Goldsmith. It was 2 to 1 and in the ninth inning Juan Uribe hits the screen attached to the left field foul pole for a home run. Dodgers tie it up in the 10th inning. The D-backs had two men on base only to have Goswitch, the backup catcher, ground into a double play. Dodgers had two on with two out in the bottom of the 10th, and we saw D. Gordon hit into a fours. So Chris Perez coming in now from a weary Dodger bullpen. Remember, Jansen made 30 pitches yesterday, Brian Wilson 28, and that's fouled back by Ross 0 and 1. Cody Ross coming back to the active list. 
Grounded a second, hit back to the box. Good play by Granke. Struck out and grounded out. So Cody is 0 for 4. And that's in there. Strike two. Eleventh inning, 2 2. Granke, right, Withrow, League, and Perez. Fastball hit to center and deep. Back goes Ethia to the track at the wall. Makes the catch. So Cody just misses hitting one out. And we have one down in the 11. Two runs, five hits for each team. And a lot of fly balls. So with one out, the batter is Martin Prado. Nice play by Ethier. Prado fly to right and struck out, grounded out, and was walked intentionally. One ball and no strikes. It was Prado at the plate. And the pitch that went over his head. And over the outstretched arm and glove of Fedorovich. Roll it a short. Hanley gets a good jump. Two down in the 11th. When the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the 11th, it'll be Crawford, Uribe, and Fedorovich. Owings struck out twice, grounded out, and walked. And a strike. Chris Perez, in his 10th game, he is not allowed to run. One ball and one strike. Owings followed by A.J. Pollock. Just off the plate, two and one. And a fly ball. That could be trouble. Ethier makes a one handed catch. So Andre went to the wall for one and to the grass for the other. And we go to the bottom of the 11th, but we'll take a second look at that one. Here comes Andre. And we're heading for the bottom of the 11th, 2 2.
in the ninth inning. But before we see Uribe, we'll see Carl Crawford to lead off the inning. It was Uribe who hit the big home run to tie it up. It hit the screen, and the Dodgers celebrated. But they're locked in a 2-2 tie now in the bottom of the 11th inning. So Crawford and then Uribe and then Fedorovich. Left-hander Joe Thatcher made four pitches. Now fly ball to center and Crawford is done. He's 0 for 2 as a pinch hitter. And a regular finishing up in left field. So now Uribe. Two fly balls to center, a ground ball to short, and then the ninth inning home run to tie it up. 47,680 out here tonight. Hope you'll be out here with us tomorrow at 5. Dan Harron will be on the mound for the Dodgers against Mike Bolsinger. And then Josh Beckett on Sunday at 1 against Cole Mentor. Little cutter in for a strike, 0 and 1. Uribe, three home runs, seven RBIs. Off the plate. One ball and one strike. Hit foul down the right field line. Joe Thatcher in looking it up. I wondered if they ever faced each other since Thatcher, a left handed specialist. They have not faced each other. First time. Three and two, the count to Uribe. Fedorovich waiting. Foul back. Two runs, five hits for each team. And three home runs in this low scoring game. And a high fly ball, but very playable. Pollock is there. So two down in the 11th inning, and Tim Fedorovich coming up. Fedorovich popped up in the third inning. Had an eight pitch at bat in the fifth inning and fly to left. Fly deep to center in the seventh and hit a fly ball to right. So he's hit the ball in the air all four times. Hitting 077. Done his usual good job behind the plate. In there. 0 and 1. Last year, Fedorovich had four home runs for the Dodgers. This time fouled away. At Albuquerque a couple of years ago, he had 11 home runs. That would be his career high. And he's in a hole, no balls and two strikes against the veteran Joe Thatcher. Bottom of the 11, 2-2. Two, two. One and two. Down in the corner, Adrian Gonzalez, Juan Uribe, Hanley Ramirez. One and two the count. Pulled back a third up with a nice Lee's Prado. So the Dodgers tiptoe through the 11th inning, and we're heading for the 12th in a 2 2 tie.
home run by Juan Uribe to lock up with Scott Van Slyke home run in the seventh to get even. And here we are heading for the 12th inning. It's been Granky and Wright, Withrow, League, and Perez. It's been Miley and Putz, Ziegler, Reed, Delgado, and Thatcher. Trevor Cahill got up down in the Arizona bullpen. The Dodger bullpen, pretty weary, as we mentioned. Brian Wilson made 28 pitches yesterday, and Kenley Jansen made 30. So it'll take an awful lot to force Don Mattingly to bring either one of them in. Jansen is all bundled up, and so is Wilson. So it's up to Chris Perez. A.J. Pollock will start it off, and then Mark Trumbo comes out on deck. He would bat for Thatcher. Pollock has one hit, one for four, and a strike. A.J. struck out, reached on the error by Uribe, single to center, hit back to the box. Foul back, 0-2. So besides the six pitchers used by Kirk Gibson, he had Campana run, then he had to use his backup catcher. He's used Chavez as a pinch hitter, and he'll be using Trumbo in a minute. No swing at first base, says Jeff Nelson, and the count one and two. Two two and we're in the twelfth inning. And that's stroked into left center field. Ethier over to cut it off. Comes up with it cleanly. However, Pollock is in there for two. So AJ took one look. Ethier was going away from the play. With Ethier running to his right, he was running away from his throwing arm. Pollock immediately took the advantage and turns a single into a double. So now Trumbo has been called back. And we'll see who's going to hit. And it'll be Cliff Pennington, the other shortstop. Into second base goes Pollock with a smart double on a ball hit to the gap and left Attention center. Place for the Diamondbacks pinch hitting, number four, Cliff Pennington. Pennington coming up would not be a great surprise if he bunts. Pennington, a switch hitter batting 300. Hitting 750 right, 188 left. And that's what makes you think he might bunt. Hitting left handed against Perez. We'll see. So a leg double by Pollock, a heads up double. Dodgers pull the corners up. And here's Pennington. He shows bunt. And did he touch it? I don't know. I can't tell. There's no call yet. They're looking at the first base umpire. And they're going to send the runner Pollock back to second. Pennington goes to first. Wow. Take a look. Don't tell me another interference. Ah, there it is. It hit him on the foot. Didn't see that up here. So Pennington around the bunt, hit by the pitch. Ball is dead. Pollock has to go back to second. Now you have Para, Hill, and Goldsmith, and the Dodgers nowhere to hide. Para with three hits tonight. Three for five. They're still looking bunt, but he swings and foul. Gonzalez was way in. Uribe was way in. 0 and 1. So Pollock a heads up double. Pennington is hit by a pitch. Hitting after par, Aaron Hill. 0 and 1. And he gets the bunt down. Uribe will make the play. So the sacrifice works. Runners now at second and third, one out. Hill followed by Goldschmidt. 
So Parra does his job, moves his two. men up a notch. First base open, the Dodger infield is going to have to play up. Aaron Hill grounded into a double play, fouled out, struck out twice, and grounded out. Aaron Hill had 26 home runs two years ago, 11 last year. Hits it foul out of play. So we bring up the home runs to say that he can get you the fly ball. He had 36 home runs with Toronto and 26. So Gibby would figure he's got the right man up there. What the Dodgers, of course, would do if they can get Hill out and the situation remains the same, they would certainly walk Paul Goldschmidt. But Hill is the man. Time called by Hanley Ramirez, and he's summoning Adrian Gonzalez to the mound. So, three veterans who have been through the wars put their heads together. Owen won the count to Aaron Hill. Throw to third just to make Pollock think a little bit. AJ at third. Pennington hit by a pitch at second, one out. Fastball, and that's going to with a gap. That's not only a base hit, the run will score, but they're also going to wave in Pennington, and there's no play on him. So Aaron Hill comes up with a base hit to drive in two. Arizona takes a four to two lead. Dodgers have no room to maneuver. It was Perez or no one, and Hill hangs in there and strokes one into right center. So two hits a hit batter two runs score and here's Paul Goldsmith Aaron Hill all smiles picking up two ribbies Goldsmith has struck out three times walk and reached on catches interference takes a strike Fedorovich reaching for a pitch and Goldie's bat hit his mitt so four to two Arizona here in the 12th. Dodgers will have Ethier, Puig, and Turner. And if anybody gets on, Ramirez. What the Diamondbacks are trying to do is what they've done here for three years in a row. Come here and win six out of nine. Fouled away. 0 oh 2. Four runs, seven hits for Arizona. Two runs, five hits for the Dodgers. Low and away, one and two. Big play, of course, was Pennington coming up to bunt to move Pollock over, and Pennington hit on the foot or the ankle and awarded first. So then Parra was able to sacrifice and boom, Hill, the base hit. D backs trying to snap a six game losing streak and trying to win their first game against the Dodgers this year. They were 0 and 5. Still 1 and 2 to Paul Goldschmidt. Bolsinger and Harron tomorrow at 5. Cole Mentor and Beckett on Sunday. Then the Phillies come in for four, followed by the Colorado Rockies. So the Dodgers play out of the division with the Phillies. Giants have 22 in a row within the Western Division. 
Slider foul back. Dodgers now in a game that's about four hours old. Remember up in San Francisco they played one just short of five hours. One and two to count. Goldie lifts one into shallow right center. A trio of Dodgers. Pui makes a trap. No catch, but he can throw to second and get a force play. And for Pui, I think he went face first into the grass. Wow. So he traps the ball, but they get a force on Hill. There's the trap. Bam! There goes their face. Catcher number nine, Tuffy Goswitch. So Tuffy Goswitch coming up. So near and yet so far, but he still got himself an out. Nine six, two down. And Tuffy Goswitch, who grounded into a double play in the tenth inning, takes ball one. To repeat, when the Dodgers come up, Andre Ethier, Yasiel Puig, Justin Turner, and if anybody gets on, Ramirez. Runner goes, throw is high, tag is there. So Turner makes the tag. Good throw by Fedorovich. However, two runs in the 12th inning for the D backs. They lead 4 to 2. Up against a starting pitcher, Trevor Cahill. Cahill has had a poor beginning anyway. He is 0 and 4. His earned run average is 9. He's made four starts. He's lasted 17 and two third innings and given up 25 hits and 18 earned runs. So Cahill will try to put the lid on this thing. It's been Miley and Puts, Ziegler and Reed, Delgado, Thatcher and Cahill, the Dodgers, Granke and Wright, Withrow and League, and Perez. Right now, it would be Thatcher for the win and Perez the loss, and the Dodgers trying to do something about it. Perez made 26 pitches in his two innings. Ball one to Andre got into the game late in a double switch fly to left field in the ninth 0 for one. Ground ball. Up with it is Goldschmidt. And we have one out in the 12th. The battle will be Yasiel Puig. Who has walked twice struck out three times.
Looking at Puig, he is two for eight against Cahill in the past. That would be a 250 batting average. And Justin Turner hitting back of him. And then if given a shot, Hanley Ramirez. much of a swing from Yasiel. Remember how hard he swung his previous at bat before he struck out. One and one. Kay Hill a local boy in this sense born in Oceanside still lives down there. Strike one and two. He went to Vista High School in San Diego. Had a four point six grade point average. Bounce that. He graduated fifth in a class of about 650, and they tell me his SAT score, he scored 1950 out of 2400. So he was going to go to Dartmouth and then signed with the A's. Fouled off, thrown hard, 92. <laughs> Trevor Cahill facing Yasiel Puig won 18 ball games for the A's. And down goes Puig. What a night. He's had six plate appearances and he hasn't hit the ball yet. He has struck out three times. He has walked three Justin times. Turner. And the batter Justin Turner with his foot in the door. Four runs, seven hits, no errors for the D backs. Two runs, five hits, two errors for the Dodgers. The winner would be Thatcher, and the winner would give the loss to Perez. Ball one. Turner has struck out three times, hit back to the box and walked. Cahill's only other relief appearance last August, he got the win, pitching in an extra inning game from the 15th through the 18th. That was a game played in Philadelphia. There's a trap, no oh, catch, so no reason to throw. Turner lines to short, and the ball game is over. As the Arizona Diamondbacks beat the Dodgers for the first time this year, four to two. The Dodgers, meanwhile, are going to claim that was not a that was not a catch; that it was a trap. But I think it's all over. They'll lose that as Laz Diaz talks to Mattingly. So catch it was, win it is for Arizona. They're now one and five with the Dodgers, and tomorrow. Bull Singer and Harron, the play of the game. Well, let's give it to Aaron Hill. He came up with that single in the 12th inning that drove in two runs as he hit it to the gap. And that broke the 2 2 tie, and the Dodgers go down to defeat. Remember, Arizona plays well, especially here. We'll see you tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Till then, we wish you all a very pleasant good evening.